get right to it, huh? And go for a, just jump right on into a game. Our rocks are now free in more ways than one. Hey, thanks Yandu, appreciate you. Actually, let's not put monster there because there's a real chance that they are a killmonger deck, right? So if they killmonger, I want Quinjet to not be there so we get the extra energy. Horn and pixel unit. Nope, that looks perfect, Giant Goose. You'll be one of our uh, deck submissions later today when we fire those up. Probably start with those in about two hours or so. There is one more stone in my deck. We'll do that. We'll play Blue Marvel second. Am I contesting the middle? I'm not, right? Let's play for left and right. Oh, they're Death Wave. Yep. Yeah, that's on me. They left! Alright, well. Yeah, Twitch has some funky, funky audio encoding things on occasion. I need to play any two or three cost cards that game. Favorite three cost card. They're an electro deck off of the daily bugle. I think I space stone. Space stone's like good with lockjaw, but I could do kind of want to just get churning through my deck. I assume this is a bugled card. Yeah. Itty bitty bugle boy. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Koye going in the middle here. We'll play Lockjaw left. <laughs> to be fair, Win Magus, I think part of the part of the reason why I am so annoyed with Leader is because the Leader deck kind of Leader Leech deck kind of shits on everything that's like out there. I think, I think the current Marvel Snap metagame is probably the most narrow it's ever been in my experience in my time playing the game. And there's still a decent range of things you can play because like Marvel Snap's always been pretty varied, but it's definitely less varied at the moment than it has been in the past. Might be a little fast and loose to put Electro in the deck because it means any future Lockjaws could get us, but it's be a little greedy here, huh? Do they just do nothing with their Electro? We have seven energy this turn now. That's pretty good. Are 
Are we about to get Galactus shit? That's what do nothing with Electra kind of feels like, huh? I'm gonna play, I'm gonna play, wait, am I gonna have enough? I'm gonna play this out here. Hedging no Galactus, but there's a good chance you're about to get Galactus to the lab, so I'm gonna play Thanos out there, I think. Oh, just Infinite, huh? Interesting. Is this the part where we get Taskmastered then? They can only play one card. Can I beat Infinite Center? Devil Dino is eight. Plus two, four, plus another eight. The 16, that puts me to 42. So this is, this is winning center, right? Although I guess I'm technically losing over here. So if I do, if I do this, I'm winning in all three spots. Right? Loses to like Doctor Doom though. You also get leadered, I suppose. It for us. Uh, fucking leader. I guess, I guess, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm supposed to jam into the bugle here too. It's, it's incredibly lame. Every, every deck's a leader deck. There's no restrictions on anything. Victor, yep, I got you. You'll be number two today. Let me start with those later. Well, we have plenty of one drops to draw. We won't be able to, I should play him in too. We won't be able to uh, activate Thanos, but other stones will still be useful. Seen you at magic related stuff with a Dutch flag by my name. No, that is completely incorrect. Absolutely never happened. I am very, very American. Uh, Crumelacade, would you have come past as Arcadence? I see Giant Goose, Victor, and Arcadence are the three that I've had here. I plan to take six today. And then Hots just added one. You sent something through on Wednesday. Oh, I have no idea. I have to, uh, yeah. Sorry, Kate, if you could drop me a DM and I can find that later, I don't have time to find a past submission while I'm sitting here trying to play and timing out. Please, please in the future, don't send things in on days where I'm not taking submissions. They're gonna get lost and missed. 
I am not, I'm not running a, I'm not doing a running queue like I used to for magic, uh, for snap. It's just too much to keep track of and things get missed. I don't want to like weeks long queue like I used to have for, for magic. Six power carnage. Um, as long as Marvel Snap provides a full time living for me from content, I am never planning to play Magic the Gathering again. Wizards. Wizards of the Coast is a pretty miserable company and they treat their player base poorly and they've always treated me personally poorly and Marvel Snap's also just a much better game. So no, no plans to revisit Magic the Gathering at all. Hopefully ever. I agree. I like this Thanos variant. Frame break of the animation on it's great. More than 12 ounce. Do they not play into the right? We tie the left. And we win the breaker here. Arrow Yoinky mode's a good shout out. I'm gonna write that one down. The second batch of emotes are almost done and then I'm gonna put in another request. How often does this deck play Thanos? Sometimes. The thing you need to understand about Thanos as a card is that Thanos, the best part about Thanos is the Infinity Stones. The fact that he like is a pile of stats at the end some of the time is not the reason you play him. It's just an added upside. Mushroom, thank you for the two thirds of your welcome back. Yeah, I, so the Ben Brode tweet saying that Galactus is on the watch list comes across as a little weird to me to like put that out there because in one of his follow up tweets, he mentions that they have a number of cards on their watch list. So it's like, I don't understand the point of calling out one specific new card if you're actively keeping an eye on a bunch of things. Like, I think it would be a potentially good thing if they just had like, this is our public watch list as something they shared. I mean, for what it's worth, Galactus being on the watch list makes sense because it's a card that fundamentally breaks the way the game is played, even if it's not too powerful. So I think saying, hey, these are the types of cards we're watching is fine. But I think if you're going to do that, you should. Watch list basically means these are cards the devs are keeping an eye on for like, should they be adjusting them in terms of game balance? I mean, I've always been pretty low on Wizards of the Coast as a company dedicated uh, to side gaming. I just, you know, also enjoy having a job and being able to feed my family. So we played Magic despite Wizards being perpetually shitty. Uh, let's put the Nightcrawler in the Murder World just in case they're a Killmonger deck. Oh, I can't Mindstone the Vault though because of the Cosmo. I guess we'll Mindstone the Mindscape, huh? for now. So I shouldn't buy him. Well, and that that right there is exactly why I think calling out Galactus as being on the watch list is kind of strange to me because now people are like, oh, am I not supposed to buy this card? Am I not supposed to spend my valuable few resources on it? And like, again, I don't think having a watch list is bad so much as only calling out one card that you're putting on the watch list is weird. Gromalicade, thanks for the five gifties. 
Kate, if you could drop me a DM with your card sheet or whatnot, I can take care of that today. I just don't have time to go back in, find it in the, the thing. Okay, so I think the surf is about to be up, Jet. Are those the last of my stones? I think those are the last of my stones. Does Thanos' power stone win over here? I think it does, right? And soul stone's more than power stone here, right? As if they like double surfer, we might be in trouble. Yeah, I, I agree to Sidle Gaming. You like the Friday Favorites video. Thanks, JJ. Oh, we could get Killmongered. Yeah, that's true. Then putting the putting the Power Stone under Murder World makes even more sense then, right? I think if they Killmonger, there's still a chance we win left and right, right? Are we good? Yeah, we win center here because they only surfered once. And they would have had Surfer A and Killmonger. They'd have gotten us there. I think we beat one or the other. Hey, Prophet, thanks for the Prime, appreciate it. How would they double surfer there? Well, they had Sarah, right? So they could Wong or Absorbing Man to get Surfer to trigger twice on the final turn is something that happens in those decks on occasion. This deck is probably not doing win a location with one card. Win a location with four cards this year, though, for sure. Got to do that twice more. We're good. This deck's good at playing cards as well. All right, ZX, you'll be our last submission of the day. Thanks for those folks. We'll start with those in a little bit. What I think is the worst card out of the new ones. I mean... Looking at the new ones, I don't know that any of them come off to me as bad. I think Null is probably the most narrow is the way I would look at them or criticize them. Decidal Gaming, thank you for the prime. And even, even Null has a bunch of decks that it's like pretty, pretty sweet in. Uh, I will not be able to DM you when your deck is up. There's just kind of too much going on over the course of, uh, over the course of a stream. You'll just have to keep an eye out on the channel, or if you miss it live, it'll be up on the YouTube archive after the fact at youtube.com Jeff Oakland. I'm just throwing these stones away. Maybe I don't need to throw away Soulstone. Wolverine means Galactus could be on the mind, which is a bad matchup for us. Oh, interesting. Do I check my emails often every single day? Yes, Wolverine does get destroyed. Oh, that's an interesting bug. So, the next turn you get plus one energy doesn't seem, doesn't seem to be tied to the on reveal. It's not what I expected. No, 
No, I got you. Uh, yep, I got you, Kate. Discord is perfect. Oh, you know what? I messed up my sequencing. I should have played... I should have played Kazar second, so then I could mystique it. But now I can't do that. That's unfortunate. That's honestly probably going to cost us the game. They haven't snapped, so I guess we could chill, but... play around wave that's probably a good thought maybe maybe this will be a uh, venom or something middle on this mystique armor will get them <laughs> got up Mystique is great. I agree. I think my uh, people are asking what other um, cards do I want to do single card highlights for. I think we're going to do Hood as my next ultimate guide card. Feedback. Feedback on that video has been good and uh, the metrics on it have been good. I think we're going to do do more like that. Hood. Hood is actually my most played Series 3 card. It goes in a ton of things. What am I going for infinite? I'm not. We play Marvel Snap on stream every day, and some of the days when we play, our rank goes up, and some of the days when we play, our rank goes down. I don't really worry about it on the in-between. This is a full-time job for me. Yes, I've been making content as my full-time job here on Twitch and YouTube for almost five years now. Before Marvel Snap, Magic the Gathering was the primary game that I played. Well, that's unfortunate. I was hoping to Space Stone into the Sanctum, but we can't do that now. I can't play them here in the Hellfire Club. It's time. And Baku could win the Sanctum, is correct. Let's get it back in our deck here. The question is going to be also, though, can we win either of the other two? Which might not. Might not be a possibility. Marvel's a pretty good, pretty good shot at helping with that, though. If they have Doom or Ultron, the Mindscape is giving it to us, so. I'll snap them here. Yeah, okay, I think they're, I think they're in a bad spot. Victory. Let's collect our cubes and move up. All right, we got 800 credits, huh? How close are we to another cash? Let's unlock a cash here real quick. Eight red cards that are ready to upgrade. Oh, I think I have a high, I think I have enough boosters for Heimdall. Yeah, I got Heimdall boosties in a cash. Rebro 5 Patriot mashup. That's not something that I've seen. 
I think there could be some okay stuff there. We're looking for a Tuma so we can get out of my shop, Chip. It's 500 credits to my next reserve, so I don't think we have enough for that. I collect your tokens. Oh, I forgot to check what was in my shop this morning, Chip. Hey, look, Chip. A Tuma has now been in my shop for 32 hours straight. I'm glad I'm glad we got null. Because it's actually just been the Atuma show since I got null. How is that possible? Atuma is the only Series 4 card I am missing. And if you are Series 3 complete, you get... If you are Series 3 complete, you are 60% to have a Series 4 card in your shop. I almost want to buy this Patriot variant, but I don't think I have any boosters for him. Same thing with this torch. Why torch and Patriot boosters do I have? I don't play either of those cards a ton. I actually almost have enough torch boosters to split. I think I have almost no Patriot boosters though. Yeah, only 30. I don't know knots. I wouldn't be surprised if that happened accidentally. Seems like there's a lot of rough edges on the token shop implementation currently. Mataj, I would love to draw some cards. I think I'm just chilling on Mr. Baku for now in case we draw a, uh, what's it called? I think Atuma is a very reasonable slash good guard. I would be I would be very happy to find Atuma out of a uh, a reserve. I'm looking forward to building with Atuma. It's just I can't justify spending. I can't justify spending tokens on him because I'm gonna get him out of. I'm guaranteed to get him out of a reserve here soon. I I actually think. The concept slash moniker that I hear from people, Marty, of like, this feels like a Series 3 card is kind of weird or kind of shows a misunderstanding of things because everything could be a Series 3 card, right? Most of them are going to be Series 3 cards eventually. The series don't dictate the power level of things. They dictate, um, they dictate just artificial scarcity for the sake of being artificially scarce when something first comes out. Yeah, it's the, it's the newness of a thing. Yes, that's true. For early, so some earlier stuff, there's definitely a, we think this is a key answer card. It's definitely, that's definitely a thing. Let's go Mr. Baku here, Blue Marvel here. Hope these danger room procs work in our favor. You know, do we know how long it takes for Series 4 cards to reach you? We don't yet. Second Dinner has not shared that information with us yet. We don't we don't know that, ZX. They've not communicated anything. We didn't get any series downgrades when Null released. So I'm hoping that we're gonna get some bulk downgrades at the start of next month when the series pass happens. Anybody, anybody telling you they know how long it takes for cards to rotate either has insider information that they're not providing a source for or they're lying to you because Second Dinner has communicated nothing publicly. Damn. Yeah, I just, I just don't know. I like, I feel like there's a lot of Series 3 cards that fit that description as well, Vader. Would mostly be my feelings. Discord link. My Discord is available for all of my supporters. It is not a publicly available Discord server. All right, we're gonna go Mystique here. Copying. Mystique will still copy. Mystique will still copy Blue Marvel despite it having died. And then Armor goes here. Armor adds six going to 13. And then if Mystique lives, we even beat Taskmaster on Destroyer here because she'll add four more. So we'll go 13, 17. So we're definitely staying for a cube. Oh, 
Oh, they can't Taskmaster Destroyer because they Jubilee it. Motherfucker. Oh, and then I have priority, so my armor stops their stuff from dying. God bless America. That's so frustrating. <sighs> Actually, I just lost 225% or still lose the game. A blue Marvel or or Mystique Live, we win that. Definitely have a long time sub by Rufio. I don't know if that's the same one though. Maybe if they're hanging out, they can pipe up. That might have been them though. Born and launch pad. Hey, no worry. No, don't ever feel like you need to you need to bounce or retreat cubes to me. I appreciate it if you pause the stream so you're not like following what I'm doing in real time, but. If you know what I'm playing in advance, it's really not a big deal. You should hang out in gym. Hey, congrats, Lux. Uh, thanks, I guess. Like to reality stone you. Those deck often have a large hand for Dino. And a cage. Oh no! Oh, chat. Usually I remember to play second for that too. God damn it. That's on, that's on me. You should always play Reality Stone slash Wanda second or last in your path. I deserve, I deserve this loss. Do you ever check the opponent's number of cards to see if they're Thanos or Agatha? Well, Thanos doesn't change your starting hand size. Agatha does, though. You are correct on that. Oh, I wanted Mystique. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I did want Mystique. So there's a reason to play second. It's a good, it's a good catch. Okay, Mind Stone's actually a pretty solid hit here. Because it means that my dino gets bigger. I can move any of these. Oh, wait. I can move my armor over to fill this because of Space Stone popping out. That's so good for us, which means I can put Mr. Baku into here. Wait, hold on. Okay, so we move this over. Oh, I can't Mystique the Devil Dino. I was like, I can Mystique Devil Dino, but I actually can't do that anymore. We put this here. We put this here. We put this here. We put this here. Space Stone is really, really good. Yeah. And Mr. Mr. Baku will get to flip out of the deck and help us win center. Oh, I did these in the wrong order. My devil dino should be bigger. Mr. Baku. Thanks, bud. Yeah, leader, leader is pretty mediocre against this deck. And this deck, 
was great uh is great against the leech leader deck for this reason right like they leeched us and leadered us and it just didn't matter i'm new to twitch why is the music sometimes weird it is an encoding issue yeah rostin if you refresh the stream and sometimes you have to do it once or twice it'll fix itself but it is an issue on twitch's end with the way they downgrade encoding gonna be 25 credits short of being able to split another card and get another chest play four cost cards it's like doesn't have a lot of four cost cards any of the decks i want to play have four cost cards in them not really right what things what are things that are good to leech leader that play four cost cards Mr. Negative's not really great into Leech Leader. So, this is like kind of like a Scar Diff, but also kind of not. Because, um, not having to worry about an arrow later has value. I do not have Valkyrie, unfortunately, no. Not a card that I have access to. Valkyrie. Valkyrie is on the list of cards that I would be excited to play with, but I don't think is good enough for me to spend 6,000 tokens on. She is. She's one I'm going to be waiting to downgrade before I pick her up, I think. I think of the remaining Series 5 cards I'm missing, Bost is probably the only one. I would, uh, I would spend a bunch of tokens on. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of what the official take is, Shandy. When I said, we don't know, I was correct in saying, we don't know. All right, well, we're a rock jaw deck now. Oh, you know what? I should have armored first because if I would have armored first, that would have let me, that would have let me copy armor with Mystique. I need to think about playing around Mystique coming out of my deck with Lockjaw. Although I guess that's not true, right? Cause it would have taken whatever played here first. No, I guess that doesn't matter. Mystique with Lockjaw is weird for sure. Okay, and actually speaking of sequencing, I want to, Always Reality Stone first for one. And then second, I want to M'Baku last. So that way I don't have a chance to redraw M'Baku with whatever Reality Stone is doing. I messed up and I played the Nightcrawler after the Reality Stone. There's so many little sequencing decisions in this deck. A Reality Stone Carbotage for the two draw. Yeah, maybe that's better. No, wait, the way Reality Stone works, it gets rid of this before it goes a second time, I believe. Okay, so we're losing the left. How bad is the right looking for us, is the question. Not terrible, okay. Uh, it's a shame we're not one bigger on the left because then Kazar would let us tie there. There's a chance they play nothing mid and just play for the right. They're also down by less in the mid right now though, but we can play there. Yeah, there's a good chance we lost either way. Oh gosh. Okay, so I was screwed either way. Wait, they killed their own thing? 
LOL. LOL. And then there's room for Mr. Baku, chat. And then there's room for Mr. Baku. Tobias, thank you for the 33 months. Welcome back. Should probably be snapping a little bit more aggressively with this. Keep getting a lot of two cube wins. Yeah. Turn one land war elves, turn two lockjaw. Things you love to see. It. I believe it's pronounced M broken. Cajun guy, thank you for the almost four and a half years. Been a long ride, but glad to still be here snapping with you. Thanks for thanks for sticking around. And Tobias, thanks for the almost three years. Good morning, good morning. Little dangerous playing Lockjaw to the unknown, but ideally I want Lockjaw to a path where I can play four things to. And they cloaked, so I could have played him at all. Rats. All right, this could be anything still. I'm going to Okoye into Quinjet mid, I think. And then next turn, these will be free because of Quinjet. We play against a lot of other streamers all the time. I don't, I don't know everybody. There's a lot of streamers that don't have the same username on Twitch and inside the game, so it's really hard to keep track of it. Oh, I should Quinjet first because of Mystique. That's a good shout. We talked about that last game too, right? Good call out. Appreciate that. To set a low bar... Mr. Baku is better than Angel Chip. I know, I know it's a god priority here getting us. These stones would be bigger. Okay, so this is actually a ton of fun. I get to go Space Stone here, and then Reality Stone, and then we're gonna get to slide Lockjaw over into the Avengers compound for next turn. Killing those is low key kind of great for us. Oh, Mr. Baku is down, is noteworthy. Have I played a time stone yet this game? We time stone turn one. Okay, cool. And our deck's kind of stacked right now, right? It's like Blue Marble and Kazar. So they're Okoye. Oh, wait. Is the reality stone not going to be able to go back in? No, it should be able to. Oh, my God. Lockjaw's, Lockjaw's having a little bit of a hard time, right? No, stop it. Oh, my God. What an, in what an incredibly bad beat. All of, all of the cards, we like just flipped out more stones. Mm. They already killed Monger, so I don't have to worry about that again. Um, They're going to seven here, so I really don't need to move these, right? This is like a blue marble mid. Well, actually, well, 
It's probably an Ant-Man mid blue marble power stone right, huh? Do I need a Koye here? It's probably good to hedge this a little bit in case they play more stuff out here. We're going to get plus four here up to 11. And we're adding six more here in the middle. Okay, we're actually tying the left here still, right? Nice. Solid win. Glad we snapped. We win all three here, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, tie win win. Victory. Is it better to play Kazar along with Nightcrawler? Maybe? It would have put. I don't think so. It would have put more power here, right? But I kind of wanted more power in these other places. Yeah, I think Blue Marvel's better. Because I want, I want these locations to be bigger, not this one. Because I have Thanos over here to cover the right. Zar costs four. You should be thinking of your missions, Moon. I'm going to Mind Stone on one. Because Mind Stone on one means that I'll be able to Reality Stone plus another Stone on two. Uh, I am currently undecided on if M'Baku is a meme or a dream. Damn it! Always reality stone last, Hogland. I'll never learn my lesson, shit. Someday, someday I will remember to reality stone last. Today is not that day. Am I trying to track with put all the stones out or just a bonus of power stones? Burger? I don't manually track it. I like sit there and like go back and count it sometimes, but I'm not actively keeping track during the game, no really. Is Hood worth getting in the token shop? Yes, I think Hood's one of the best cards in the game. Opponent snapped me. I think we can go toe-to-toe -to -toe here. Wong's a little scary on turn three, but... Redek does some silly things too. Please be Professor X. Please be Professor X. Okay. Good chat. Good chat. I think Iron Heart will take middle. They need Iron Heart plus an Odin, right? Because I have Blue Marvel. I have blue marvel, Chad. I'm beating a seven in the middle. I don't need to play around wave here. Ooh, now we're losing a double spectrum, right? Oh no, I needed to, well, I guess even if I would have played, no, yeah, if I would have played, I needed to play Blue Marvel last turn and we could have beat Spectrum, damn. Damn, damn, Man, fucking Professor Cheese. Yeah, yeah, take my cues. Yeah, 
Yeah, we just win this. So super easy and beat this cheeser. God, we lost them both by fucking one. That's so frustrating. That's so frustrating. I knew as soon as I played the dino too. Chat. All right. I'm just timing out people that are telling me to mystique into a cosmo. Okay, good chat, good chat. Thank you, Twitch. Please leave. Easily beat their string cheese with slightly better play. That one's on me. Uh, let's leave Mind Stone. I knew they Professor X2 as they snapped to. Mr. Fantastic was it a card that I was taking into account from their deck. And I should have been. Should have, should have been taking into account their Mr. Fantastic. Yeah, my hand's fine. My hand's better than fine. Let's play. That's actually quite bad for us. Oh my god, we just can't catch a fucking break. Oh, we're dead to Galactus. Wait, they're not Galactus? Really? Okay, good shit. They're not a bot chat, they're just a human that made a mistake. I know Twitch chat has never made a misplay in their lives, so they're not familiar with that. We did, we did in fact catch our break, the opponent misclicking. I'm not playing this last stone out because I, uh, we also haven't won this game yet. I don't, I don't know that I'm necessarily gonna have space for this. Let's see how this game ends up at. It's gonna be a really slow lock jaw as Bojo World goes in and out and Kazar ticks up and down. Their list is an interesting combination of things. 
I actually don't have room to make Thanos pop, but that also probably doesn't matter. Is Power Stone better than Blue Marvel? You think they're Cerebro 3 Galactus? Oh, they might be Cerebro 3 Galactus. That's funny. That means Soul Stone really gets them on the left, right? That's kind of a fun idea. Should work on that at some point. I think Mystique is better than Power Stone here, right? She's only one less power and she makes all the other lanes that much bigger. Hey, Yellow, thank you for the two months. Really appreciate your input, welcome back. Like it is, thanks for the over three years. Good morning, good morning. All right, there's half of the eight cubes back that I spewed. I can't imagine Streamer 3 winning a single lane after playing Galactus. Yeah, I think that's an accurate statement. Hey, I'm glad it's useful for you, Ghost. Oh, they could be playing Valkyrie. Now that's a fun idea. Okay, so it's Cerebro 3 Galactus with Valkyrie. Yeah, that actually sounds kind of funny. That would, that would, that would work, right? I think I'm gonna have Mr. Baku clear out Warrior Falls shit. Do any Spider Man decks up on my YouTube? Not really. Spider Man doesn't really have a good home. Miles Morales has some good shells, but actual factual Spider Man, I think, is like a second or third worst card in most of the decks that he's played in. Like, he's at his best when paired with Daredevil, but I think Professor X and Gamora and Hobgoblin just tend to be better than him. Yeah, sorry, Peter. Wow, them playing Hood there is actually super awkward for us. It means I can do nothing this turn. Glintar merging everything is kind of nice for us, though. I was counting on my squirrels in the Mindstone dying. Is a movement archetype good? It is not. Oh my God, they just keep getting us locked there. Okay, the Clinchar merges though, right? So we got that at least. At least have that going on for us. I think this is a Devil Dino right into Mystique copy Devil Dino plus Cantrips on the left, right? I think I snapped them. Their deck has a hard time playing into Crimson Cosmos. Movement isn't good. Could you tell me what makes it less than ideal? Yeah, so. When you start playing against better players, they understand that they should just ignore the left lane against the movement deck. Also, your final turn in the movement deck is incredibly telegraphed with Heimdall. So it's a bad deck at getting more than one or two cubes on top of being easy to play around. Because in the games where you can't play around it, it's fairly easy for any experienced player to know deterministically they should be leaving. Yeah, the opponent was playing the Beast Bounce deck. Not all of our missions, except for this one. I think the 
little moves deck that I've highlighted on the YouTube channel uh, before is like, fine. We're not gonna say it's good, but we'll call it fine. I think it's better than the Heimdall variations. But yeah, Wong, Wong and the movement deck are the two things that newer snap players really seem to dislike and don't understand the power level of it. There, there are two things that get much worse once you understand the game a little bit more. I mean, yeah, if you, if you like it, feel free to go nuts, right? But like, a lot of people think those decks are genuinely good or even busted in their limited experience I've seen a lot of the time. If I had to climb from 50 to infinite right now, what would I personally play? Boy golly, do I have the YouTube video for you. I posted a Friday favorites video this morning talking about the decks I will probably play off stream this weekend. We have the power. That question was a plant. It wasn't, but I'll take it. There isn't, but there probably should be. Let's make a Friday favorites command. Put it in the stream title too. You know what I should have done last is I should have done Blue Marvel last. So that way I could mystique him. That's what? That's what I should have done. Hey, thanks for hanging out, Zim. Yes, the Hearts Wild Pack will be replaced by a similarly low value cosmetic bundle. Loosely, it looks like we're gonna have a constant rotation of one high value bundle in terms of collection progress. It'll have lots of credits and tokens, and then one other bundle that's primarily cosmetic focused with little pr actual account progress in it. Yeah, I'm waiting for the Sunspot bundle on the 21st too. Man, my inability to Mystique Blue Marvel really is gonna bite me this game. Pretty big mistake. We have a Wong deck. I don't really think Wong is a particularly good card. Good. Very easily countered. It's a big dino on the left, Chip. It's a big dino on the left. Are we winning the right? We are winning the right. We'd also potentially be winning the left, depending on what they do. I played... Huh? Do I want to... My own dino isn't that big. I think this is just Mystique, Copy, Kazar, and then Mr. Baku in the middle here. And if they play two cards out that don't generate them more cards, we win left. And we're also adding power to the right. We're also adding power in the mid here. So Mr. Baku is going to be five, and then this is going to go up to four. So that'll be seven. We'll be 12 in the middle here. I think Rogue is excellent in Silver Surfer decks. It's a good tech slash hate card for those. Pretty 
Bunker Breaker, give me the news. I got one point over you. They're up by three, we're up by four. Win it by the slimmest of margins, Chip. Calculator or lucky? To be fair, I did sit and calculate the most power I could put into play. All right, looking to draw a one drop next turn to fill this raft up. Oh, Sandman variant. Tabaku. Ooh, that's kind of annoying. I think Bost works in this deck. Yeah, Bost is probably fine in this deck. Yeah, I don't have anywhere I can play Lockjaw to this turn, it's said. Do you have any decks that will beat Leech Leader? That's exactly what my list of Friday favorites is this morning. Check that out on the YouTube channel. We can just slide them back to the left. That's true. Other order so I can mistake the blue marvel for a change. Okay, and they do still have their free six drop here, is noteworthy. Our six drop is more than 10 power. We kind of just lose, right? Is that true? If I put power stone in the middle, power stone in the middle is going to be worth six. And then I'm getting plus three here. This could be, this could be game winning. Let's stay for a cube. So if I would have put Nightcrawler mid and Power Stone here, we would have won. How necessary is Absorbing Man in the Surfer Negative deck? I don't even know that I like the Surfer Negative deck, if I'm being honest. The more, the more, I actually deleted the Surfer Negative deck from my deck list, because I think it's worse than Stock Negative. The existing Negative deck. I prefer the, I prefer the Patriot Surfer deck or the Absorbing, or not the Absorbing, the, uh, the Domino Surfer deck. Looking for a reality stone to get rid of the space throne here. We're not so lucky. 
You found negative worked a lot better after you ditched Sarah. You are the first and only person I have ever heard express that feeling. I would I would be astonished if Sarah is not not good. I played I played a lot of negative. Sarah is very good in that deck. I mostly think your take is just wrong <laughs> for whatever that is worth. Yeah, Sarah, Sarah makes the negative deck better by a significant margin in my opinion. You want to play Magic and Sarah? No, I want to play Reality first to your chat. Because I want to draw from my deck before I put Baku back in it. I mean, fast is good in the negative deck too, but you don't cut Sarah for it. Like you're you're right that if you have fast, he's good in the negative deck. Uh, I haven't played Time Stone yet, right? Is that accurate? I haven't played Time Stone? Or 20% to get it? So I could Devil Dino, or I could go Kazar Quinjet. I think, I think we go Kazar Quinjet here, and then if we spike the Time Stone, we get to get Thanos online. We just want to not draw Baku, so Baku can jump out. <sighs> okay, so... I think... I'm punting the right, am I? Am I more likely to win? I'm more likely to win left or right. I could go either way here, honestly. Sarah is scary. Hopefully the real Mysterio is Miss Middle. Quinn, then Kazar, and Kisa Mystique, right? No, I think I played Thanos Power Stone regardless. I think I'm a fish and I'm going to stay in here. It's a Killmonger stab. That could be a Killmonger stab. That's true. Oh my god, they made us draw Baku. And now we're going to die to Killmonger. That's fine. Baku is going to be big enough either way, right? I take it back. The Leech leader deck is fine because it makes this the this opponent's deck unplayable. The reason why this deck hasn't been popular is because playing Sarah on five when your opponent leeches you is unplayably bad. All right, I'm going to switch. I'm going to switch decks for a little bit here, but that it's been a while since I've experienced that deck. And the reason why it's been a little bit is because it is very bad into the deck everybody is playing at the moment. I was like, this deck is very bad into Killmonger, but Killmonger stonks have also been at kind of an all time low because of the Leech Leader deck. Uh, Falcon's not particularly good in general. Yeah, I mean, obviously card games have varying rock, paper, scissors type experiences, but also, like, there's a difference between being paper into, like, scissors being popular, right?
Yeah, I really wasn't a fan of Ben's tweet about Galactus. It came off as really strange to me because in a follow-up tweet, he said that they have a long list of cards on their watch list. So it feels really weird and meta warping to like publicly state this one particular card is on their watch list, but not tell us everything that's on it. It's like, what's the, what's the point of telling me, what's the point of you telling me that this one thing is on the watch list, but not others? Like, I think if they wanted to have a fully transparent public watch list, that would be good, good and sweet. I actually haven't really seen a lot of complaints about Galactus, and it hasn't felt overpowered in my experience. I am. Okay, and Iron Man and Xandar is one of the many things that could beat us here. This is just like one of the 800 things. Like I am, I really was, I was very surprised to hear Galactus was on a watch list. Like the, the watch list has to be a half the cards in the game for Galactus to make it onto it. Like there's so much direct counterplay and you could just directly go over the top of them in the lane that they're trying to play to. Yes, it gets hated by a ton of cards that incidentally already see play too is key. Agree, agree, agree. Hams, thanks for up in the prime. Appreciate it. I basically have to wave and then hope to Galactus next turn, right? Or one in four to do that, 25%. All new cards enter the game in series five. Chat, my Ebony Maw doesn't have any abilities. I don't think you need to add Leech to the Lock Thor deck because the Lock Thor deck is already good against the things that are playing Leech. idea that like things shouldn't be rebalanced because people spend currency on them I think is also very silly it's actually one of the reasons I bet they were apprehensive about adding a purchasable card currency to the game because when everybody just opened things randomly um when everybody just opened things randomly, there was never any bitching about refunds or stuff like that if they rebalance things, right? Now, no, they should not give stuff back for nerfs, chat. 
I don't, when they give resources back for nerfs, it means every fucking balance decision they make over the course of the game has to get balanced off of the fact is, is this balance important enough to disrupt the in-game economy? And I don't, I don't want that to be the decision point. I want, I want the decision point for should a balance change to be, is the balance change good for the game? Is it, is this balance change necessary to keep the game fun? Also, yeah, quite, quite literally, when you click her, I, I, I'm honestly extra, this is just like peak card gamers. Are there refunds? Are there refunds when you, oh wait, it's when you click the actual button, right? I don't wanna click it, right? There's a button that pops up to confirm this, right? That says no refunds. At some point when you buy a card, it pops up a thing that says there's no refunds, are you sure? The collector tokens provide no refunds. If the purchase card is changed, there'll be no compensation for it. I'm pretty sure it says this again when you actually buy it too. I'm not clicking it right now because I'm not accidentally spending my tokens on a Tuma, but. To Sneakies, thanks for the two months. Welcome back. Uh, the token shop shows up at collection level 500. You also get 3,000 free tokens at level 500. Tuma is a terrible card, even if you get a free. I think a Tuma is very reasonable. I'm excited to get and build with a Tuma when I open it from a reserve. I think there's a couple different decks it goes into. And a Tuma is good with Professor X Daredevil. Decent with armor. It's good with, uh... uh... What else is the word that I'm looking for? It's good with, uh... I'm just killmongering. It's good with zero. Yep. That was, that was the word I was fumbling to find. It's good with zero. It's, it synergizes with invisible women as well. Yep. And this probably just means we're dead if we can't put a fair game together, right? I guess we wave here and then we hope that death plus null works out or death plus Chavez. But that, that part of your statement there is the part that you don't understand. You have to use your tokens to build a competitive deck. That's not true. You are guaranteed to have competitive decks, multiple competitive decks, when you finish series two. This, this idea or this bullshit thing that's pushed by all these idiots on Reddit and other places that you have to have series five cards to be competitive is just not based in reality or an understanding of the game. It's, it's by people that haven't, haven't just like want something to complain about. Gamer, card gamers love having things to complain about, chat. Like, the, the pool system is explicitly designed to give you the tools you need up front. Yes. What people really mean is they're kind of bored of playing the same decks they have that are competitive and they want more variety in their gameplay, which is a fair thing to say, but that's what you're doing with the token shop. You're spending resources for variety. You're not spending resources to be competitive. And that, that distinction really matters. Yes, that's another great call from Jack. They've also yet to nerf anything and have it be unplayable after the nerf. 
So like this idea that like if they nerf something you need to be refunded because you can't play meaningfully with your card anymore isn't represented by isn't represented by the reality that we've experienced so far. Yes, there is Mar Marvel Snap is one of the higher skill cap card games I've played because it rewards knowing the meta game and what your opponent could be playing because your opponent is so incredibly likely to have their payoff. So knowing what cards your opponent could have in their range is really important. We're gonna play Titania Chicken over here. Unless they can add six over here. Surreal, thanks for the prime, appreciate it. Victory. Call me noobers, love the favorites fed, been playing Cerebro 2 all week. It really, yes, Cerebro 2 is wonderful. Honestly, we should probably play a little bit of that. Uh, start on viewer submissions in like half hour, hour or so, but. Street Road 2 is probably the best thing we played yesterday. I do, I do still need more. More Mr. Sinister Boosters. I think I'm gonna retire Mr. Baku chat. Eh, we'll give Mr. Baku another chance. We'll give Mr. Baku one more morning of a chance. So, the Double Up Shell is my favorite She-Hulk deck, but I've also kind of perpetually been off of She-Hulk because She-Hulk is really bad into the Leech decks. I think the Kazoo deck's a fine choice, which is why I recommended it. It's a deck that has very polarizing matchups though, right? Like it's polarizing good against leader and it's polarizing bad against Killmonger. More brains, thanks for the quarter of a year. Welcome back. Uh, excuse me, Baku won two games yesterday. Thank you very much. That makes some Hulk shit. I think Cerebro 2 is the most powerful Cerebro deck currently, which is why it's the one I recommended in my favorites video this morning. Yeah, I think if you have bossed, um, the, it should probably play in the Khazar deck. You think you get some Brood? No, Brood is not replaceable in any of the decks it's played in. It is a unique and powerful effect. I'm gonna snap them before my Brood flips up here. I don't think what the bots play really will have a meaningful impact on anything in the meta. play to the right here because this 
could, this will be either of these long term. Potentially, we might we might storm the left. Oh gosh. Okay, well now we're storming that. Yeah, I think if you're missing Daredevil from this list, swapping it for Scorpion and Iron Man is a good call. Well, the flooding's actually about to be somewhere else, right? So I think I brewed middle and like Baku here and I hit submit. I think I stabbed times. I think we're in a pretty good spot here with the Cerebro after the fact and the flooding moving. I actually don't know an ideal shell for Titania yet. She's a really complicated card that feels hard to play with. I just want to make sure they don't get a free path with Professor X here, right? So we'll blue marvel. Titania is the one that has huge tracts of land, yes. Yeah, Moon Miles or the Double Up, Double Up She-Hulk deck are places that I've liked to Tanya. Oh yeah, she's been okay in the Galactus shell. All right, so I think we go Nightcrawler, Mid, Mr. Sinister here, Cerebro. This gives us 20 and 20. That puts us up to 11 over here in case the dino gets small. This also shrinks their lizard down over here. Someone, someone injure me. How long ago was the last time Monty Python had a, <laughs> had an episode? That was, that was old when I was a child, right? Oh yeah, they are dead by a lot, Chip. Why would you invite that wound? It's but a flesh wound, you'll survive. Victory. More brains, thanks for the quarter of a year, by the way. Might have said that one, I might have not, who knows. Friday chip. We're just kind of vibing. Important is Goose in this deck. You can sub Goose for Invisible Woman if you want. Victory.
Uh, actually, let's Nightcrawler the Vats in case we don't draw one or a two next turn. We have a play then. Can slide it out of here too. Hey, Gillen. Thanks for the two months of Prime. Appreciate it. Good morning, good morning. As a general reminder to the regulars, I'm going to continue to be off on Saturday and Sundays moving forward. There will be YouTube stuff up seven days a week, though. Mr. Baku, welcome to the party. Yep, them here. Their start's kind of bad. Our start's pretty good. Chad, I've made a terrible mistake and I have snapped a Galactus deck. I guess I should just be thankful they didn't snap me back. You cannot replace Brood in any deck Brood is played in. It is a key card in basically every deck that it is included in. should have played my blue marvel middle expecting galactus to potentially be played there We've actually lost four danger room flips in a row so far this morning. Escaped. It's actually, actually just four in a row. Thanks, Liam's. Yeah, Monster Isle means we're not a Cerebro deck here, obviously, right? We're going to be a Daredevil, Hobgoblin, hopefully Blue Marvel deck this game. Oh no, chat! They made my Hobgoblin spoiler! There's Blue Marvel. Unfortunately, fortunately, where it's gonna get, it's gonna get leached here most likely. Oh, this is the, this is the leech you turn four deck, Jet. Turn four, I guess. 
Goblin might be able to steal us the left, and Goose might take the middle. I'm going to snap them here. They're going to 25, and then they're going minus 9 to 16. Yeah, I think this is one of the instances where they think they're far enough ahead that they can beat the snap. Oh, wow. Oh, and I played in the wrong order. Fuck, we're going to draw Mystique. I'm going to lose. Oh, my God damn it. <sighs> We win if I play in the right order, right? Because we go Mystique here, and then we play this here. And then these are 8, 12. Are we still short? It would be uh, 8, 12, 15. And they're gaining 7 up to 60. We're dead either way, right? We're dead either way? All right. Still frustrated that I keep making that mistake today, but we're dead either way. Escape. My opinion on the on an Electro Ramp deck. I think it's just a worse leader deck than the other leader decks that exist. Lockwood, thank you for the 16 months. Welcome back. I think if you want to play Electro in a deck, Electro inside of Spectrum Destroyer is a very good choice. I almost, I almost put Spectrum Destroyer on my Friday favorites thing, but it's just explicitly not a deck that's one of my favorites, so. <laughs> I didn't. Storm for that. I forgot things can move out of the miniaturized lab. I shouldn't have moved Nightcrawler into it. That was a mistake. Uh, this is probably Lockjaw, right? With uh, Jubilee here. I think I'm staying for the snap. Mr. Fantastic is such a fucking tease of a draw because he's the one card that lets me win the right and talk myself into staying in to lose two more cubes here. Does this beat the hammer here? It does, right? We'll be plus five going to 14. They're only going to 13. All right, can we get him?
gonna be a long couple of weeks until our New Year's patch chat. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a long couple of weeks until our, our patch after New Year's, whatever that's gonna be. Might even be three or four weeks. I honestly would rather just stream less than sit there and no life the leech leader deck. I don't I don't I don't have fun playing decks like that yet. There aren't a lot of meaningful decisions to make and there's little player agency. I'll take I'll just have a slightly smaller streaming schedule over the holidays potentially. Christy's taking the week between Christmas and New Year's off of work. Maybe I'll take a day or two off in there too. Still, I still, still stream a bit, but this is definitely the least fun Snaps metagame has been in the six months the game's existed. I just want a devil and sinister here. Let's just know where to hobgoblin next turn. Not Mystique. All right, deal. Hope this is winnable. He says before getting Galactus. Oh, you know what? I have priority. Maybe I'm supposed to hobgoblin them here to play around Galactus. Daredevils on both sides cancel each other out, Chet. Yeah, we played against this person earlier. I should have muted their emoting, emoting dickhead. Really with like a mute all option to not get distracted by it. I let that happen too often. I really I really just need to remember to start taking the time to mute mute them when I when I walk in regardless of who they are. Joe Pepitone, thanks for the two months. Welcome back. Uh, remember to do that. Just adds three extra clicks to every game that I play, which is unfortunate. Legacy. Negative is kind of scary. Then we're hoping to peel Blue Marvel next turn for the Space Throne. Just like a really good snap card in general. This puts the most power into play, right? So they have to add seven here and also beat six here, which should be fair. A flipped Iron Man does quite well. I just leave it. Yeah. Victory. Uh, 
Tembaku can get into places like Sanctum, but I don't believe he can get into the Space Throne. Nightcrawler left, Marvel Middle is better. The middle was flooded, chat. That's why my opponent couldn't play there either. Let's see that. Get this into my muscle memory. Share why you prefer Cerebro 2 to Cerebro 3. Sure, the added benefit of being able to play Blue Marvel is big, and you have other good disruptive things in utility cards like Goose and Mr. Fantastic and Storm. Are video games a waste of time? Listen, chat, we're all just withering away and slowly dying each day. Video games are pleasant flashing lights of color while we do so. Brood is also a very good card. That is accurate. They didn't come to this channel for existential horror. <laughs> Probably as close as we get. We could lose this for sure if they just play. They could play something big on the left here. They have priority, so their leader isn't good if they have it. This Mr. Sinister is worth 12 points, and Mystique is worth 2. Steelings left and right here. Oh, that's true. Mr. Baku wins the right if they play nothing there, right? Hello, Mr. Leader. Enjoy your big old cup of get fucked here in the morning. Is it good for you? Is it good for me? Mr. Baku jumping out for the rubs to tie the right. If you want to cut Hobgoblin from this deck, you should go play another hundred games with it. With Hobgoblin in it, and then you'll understand why the card is nuts. Everybody always shows up and wants to cut Hobgoblin having played zero games with the deck in the card. Hobgoblin is very, very good in this deck. This is one of the few Marvel Snap decks I've played a ton of. I am very confident that Hobgoblin has corrected it. I tried Green Goblin. Playing Green Goblin into Silver Surfer is not great. And Green Goblin doesn't have the same strong synergy with Daredevil that Hobgoblin does. Kind of surprised they didn't lock Jaw uh, Murray Isle here. Thank you. 
Now, one amusing interaction here with the Strange Academy is that the Mystique and Cerebro getting kicked into the center here means that they'll also get their bonuses. But then it's a question of, can we win the right? We get to add eight more power into there for 24, and we can only get to 28, right? So the fact that Lockjaw got in front of Magneto probably means we need to go here. Escaped. Cerebro 1 and Cerebro 2 are my preferred Cerebro variations. I have not been a huge fan of any of the others. Three and four are like, okay, but they've been worse than one and two in my experience. What does Cerebro one look like? It's a Luke Cage hazmat deck. There's a highlight of that one up on the YouTubes. Yeah, when I say Cerebro 3, I mean Cerebro 3 Destroyer. Wind Aid my hand. Remember, the Flooded is about to be somewhere other than here. Wait, if Hala ends up here, does my stuff die? Okay, good job. My Storm dies though? Awkward. Snap the goose onto the right here, I think. Victory. Uh, Mr. Fantastic Index. You mean into Galactus, Cap? I assume you mean into Galactus. I could, I'd really say my life has ever been changed by a movie. See, I think this deck has a fine, has a fine Thanos matchup. Yep. Storm, Storm in general tends to be good against Thanos. I also don't know what you mean by Thanos deck gap because there's a lot of there isn't really an established best Thanos deck Are you playing like the lockjaw Kazar build I've been playing or something else to do this.
So they probably can't get more power into here, right? So does Goose Mr. Fantastic win this then? And we play Goose first to play around leader? I haven't been playing a big stuff lock uh, Thanos deck yet. I've been playing Kazar, Kazar Blue Marvel Thanos. If they got my Blue Marvel off of White Queen, they could tie us in the middle. That's true. But then we could maybe win the breaker. I don't know, it'll be close. We're down 17. We lose? I think we lose. Is it a tie? Draw? Tie. Okay, cool. Yeah, we knew they had Blue Marvel or Hobgoblin. Good shit, good shit. Mr. Mr. Fantastic. Reaches around and grabs a lot of cubes. I think not playing Lockjaw in that archetype is a massive punt gap. K KM Best, for whatever reason, doesn't like Lockjaw. He, I, he probably thinks he's smarter than Lockjaw or whatever, but like Lockjaw is like a hyper consistent card in decks as small as Snap. He, he's, he, I've heard him say he doesn't like regular Lockjaw either, and regular Lockjaw is very good. Victory. Especially in Thanos, though. The Thanos Stones getting played into Lockjaw Path is super great. Yes, regular Lockjaw is really great into the metagame. It's, it's just good in general, but it's also good into the metagame. Yes, I don't like... I, I wasn't a fan of Carnage. We draw Storm to avoid this expansion rinse. Stay in through a snap here. I don't know if my hand is good enough. My hand is good enough. Uh, by regular Lockjaw, I mean the Lockjaw deck that is the last Let's deck see. in my Friday, Friday Favorites video. All right, I think I'm ready to spew some cubes with some viewer submissions here. I mean, to be fair, Null's not not amazing. It's very narrow. Null is Null is a super niche card. I think it's good in the niches where it exists, but Magic is currently pinned, so we can play like we have Magic. Just unlocked Sarah and Era. Well, they've got Magic pinned, and they just unlocked Sarah. So Giant Goose, I think I want to play some Mr. Negative. You have a Dex for Guardians of the Galaxy. No, those aren't really competitive. Most of, and the only Guardians of the Galaxy that are really reasonable are Gamora is great. And then Rocket Raccoon and Star-Lord are like niche, but okay. Yeah, yeah, they have, they have Psylocke. My, my, in my opinion, the core to the Mr. Negative deck is Psylocke, Mystique, Negative, Sarah, Magic. I think those are those are the important series three cards to get the most out of Mr. Negative. So Cosmo is part of the, and this is IP actually nerd stuff or whatever, it doesn't really matter, but Cosmo's not an actual guardian, right? Maybe in some multiverse he is, but in general he isn't right around in the ship. He just is involved with the movies, right? They have Rogue too. Honestly, this might be a... If Mojo, they might actually just have the whole stock negative deck. 
Did I delete the stock negative deck because I needed I needed deck space? I totally did delete the stock negative deck because I needed deck space. All right, well, let's build, rebuild stock negative. <laughs> they actually do have Bast as well, which I do not have. They'll You'll want to play Bast in your version of negative giant goose. I will not be able to showcase that card because I do not have it in my collection. I honestly would not be buying series four cards with tokens. I would I would be waiting to get series four cards from caches and I would be saving tokens for series five cards that you want. over Mojo, but I'd have to test a few different things. Uh, that is what we are what we are doing, Dodgeball Dam, but deck submissions for the day are closed. I've got six of them teed up already. We'll probably do more on Monday. Different people cut Mojo or Rogue for Bast. Yeah, I can see that. I like the utility Rogue provides in this archetype. Yeah. I think skipping your turn two is fine in this deck. What are these last couple of slots usually? I might, I might go look at, I might go cheat and look at past Jeff. Oh yeah, usually they're Iron Heart, they're Iron Heart uh, Bishop, right? It's like I knew their, I knew their pull when I pulled two cards. Iron Heart Bishop. Nah, I don't like Jubilee in this archetype. Ironheart Bishop is good. Yeah, I think I think if you have Bast, I would cut Mojo for Bast. Is the, the swap I would make here. Koye is insane in this archetype. I know you're making a joke, but I kid you not, in the Mr. Negative deck that was listed in the Marvel Snap Zone tier list at one point, it, 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 it included a Koye. Almost fell out of my chair laughing. I think without negative in hand, I mojo on two and save Psylocke to Sarah on three. As a general note slash commentary, because I know there was a lot of clickbait about stuff. I do genuinely think that this Mr. Negative build is better than the Surfer Negative builds. The Surfer Negative builds feel, um, the Surfer Negative builds feel like they are a lot more inconsistent than this build. Am I even playing Psylocke out at this point? I don't think I am because we drew Mr. Negative. I'm just like passing here. Really unfortunate that we drew Mystique here. But I think of Wong, Panther, Zola negative. I think Panther, Zola is good. I think Wong tends to be win more slash not good. Like, I think Panther, Zola is like worse than this build of negative, but it's like also still fine if you're dead set on playing those cards. Why not let Mr. Negative die? Because there's a Starlight Citadel shit. So the locations are going to change. I have to play him here if I want him to have a chance to die. So 
as is, as is often the case when chat asks me why I'm making a play, the answer is because I am cursed with the, with the ever, with the gift of literacy, chat. It's both a blessing and a curse. Sometimes I think life would be a happier place if I was illiterate like most of chat. It's tough, I'm glad I can't read, mood. Ooh, Angela is so great, chat. So we do that. I mean, actually, uh, Huh? I think I just play hard for the left and the right, right? If I iron heart to start, we even beat a claw into the right? So I know this sequencing looks weird, but I want to maximize iron heart's chances to go here, right? Oh my god, we end up one short. <sighs> god, I forgot to emote and the motherfucker was a motherfucker. The only thing more frustrating than losing is the BM after it. Need to get that into my muscle memory. Chat, most leader gamers are gonna BM you with emotes. That's why they're playing leader. Yeah, I would, re would really love a default mute option be a big quality of life increase. Face the might of Asgard. Uh, for people that are newer to the gaming space, BM stands for bad manners. Bifrost here. Guards out to trigger Bishop at this point.
Hey chat, our new batch of emotes is done. These will be up for these will be up over the weekend for people want to, that want to use them and other streams that are subbed to the channel. We'll obviously have them live for Monday here. Artists just sent them all over. Look at those. Get those added to the channel tonight when I have some time. Is Starlet Citadel a feature location today or what? I think we're staying in, but there's a chance that this is about to become the Space Throne. I didn't Mojo into Mojo World, Chip, because Mojo World's about to be somewhere else. Step them back here. We have a uh, free Iron Man in our deck. Them magicking for us here too, while we just get to sit here and play out, is also great. Literally unplayable, chat. Literally unplayable. That's true. We do get to play her out this turn. Come on, Iron Man or Blue Marvel, please. Mr. Marvel. All right, if they have, we lose the double Iron Man here, but otherwise we're in a good spot. Longers. I am Iron Man. Okay, so this is about to be an Iron Heart then. Wait, what? Uh, sure. Okay. <laughs> Kitty's on the throne, champ. Why not snap them? We have Angela, Bishop, Negative, Sarah as two, three, four, five, and I think uh, I think that sounds really good. It's my favorite Pokemon, a Lowen Sand Shroom. Why? Because Sandshrew was my favorite Pokemon when I was growing up. And I like the color blue. So it's a blue version of my favorite Pokemon.
I'm like trying to think what do I want to do with this blue marvel, this mystique. And the Sarah and the mystique. It's an iron heart. So if I If I do this, I get copies of both of these back to my hand, right? Which seems great. Yeah, I mean, even if they leech us here, that's fine. Cause like Blue Marvel and all of these are coming back to my hand. Yeah, yeah. We can draw a free Iron Man here still too. Okay, so this is only 50% to hit here because they do they do have a devil dinosaur. They do they do have a devil dinosaur. Is is noteworthy here. Or they say they have armor, sorry, with double dial. So rogue could hit could hit that. That being said, my rogues never miss, so I think we're just uh oh wait, I get to play Angela out here too, right? So I get to go Angela. No, I can't, never mind, I lied. So we go blue marvel into Mystique into Ironheart into Rogue. I don't, I don't think I want the rogue to have a chance to get hit here. Yeah, yeah, I think this is good. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they're playing for the left tier, which is why I didn't play for there. Damn. It's gonna be close, chat, because none of none of our iron heart triggers went right. We are in four. No! No! Are you fucking kidding me? Oh my god! Oh my god! Brutal. Okay, so if I would have, if I would have put, I should have been playing around this, chat. If I would have put, if I would have put Mystique on the left, we'd have won. Ro so Rogue could have won the 50-50, but if I would have put Mystique on the left, this would be plus four over here. So that's, that's my mistake. I could have, I could have played around Shang chi and won there and easily, easily beat what they were doing. That's my, that's my fault. Can you explain Mojo and the Mr. Negative deck? Yeah, it's a cheap card that you can play out on curve like this that also uh, doesn't get made worse by Mr. Negative. Starlet Citadel again, just like almost every game. Let's play Mojo out for tempo here. Sad that we're losing our turn for negative. Our hand was really good. It is a shame we can't negative into Adeline. Yeah, the turn, the turn, the games where you turn three negative and then Adeline flips up are really strong. Uh, agreed. 
All right, so Patriot for the opponent, which means this rogue is excellent. Shout out. I would like to dedicate this rogue to all the folks in chat asking me if they can replace her. Magic here, and then we'll Sarah next turn. Rogue into Mystique does work if you take an ongoing effect worth copying. Mystique, uh, Rogue gains the ongoing of the thing that she takes. It does look like, unfortunately, we're going to be done here. Fine, our draw is mediocre. Escape. We could play two cards here, but playing two cards isn't going to beat whatever one card they play. We're just too far behind. I agree with that statement. Mr. Negative is a deck that frequently wins four and eight cubes and regularly you, it's very clear when you should retreat for one. Makes it a good climbing deck. It's gonna have faith that we never draw negative here. And I'm gonna go Angela into Psylocke into magic, I think. And even if we draw a negative, we would just play Bishop then instead. Curve Bishop into negative. Something to note about the interaction between Limbo and the Vault is that the Vault reopens on turn seven. Opponent has a copy of Iron Man in their hands here. Is Mr. Negative worth playing? I think so, actually. We're gonna get two draws off of him. And our hand's probably getting leeched here. Yeah, seven some. Bangers to draw off the top sounds great. Opponent snapped. Can I stay in through the snap here with them having an Iron Man in hand? Probably not. Probably not. And again, just another easy one cube retreat. I often hear people say they can't get a grip on why this deck is considered good. And I think it's a big psychology thing. The, this archetype is pretty emotionally unsatisfying to play because of your frequent, you, you're, you're retreating for one three to four times for every good game that you win. And you still end up ahead on cubes in those exchange overall, but from a how often does this feel good versus how often am I just like bouncing out and limping out, the ratio is not good from the psychology perspective of it. All right, I have enough credits to get another chesty. What are we upgrading? It is, it is a good deck to learn practice snapping with. Agree with that, snapping or retreating.
Mojo is a replacement level card in Mr. Negative. Uh, I think Sarah tends to be pretty important though. Do we like Chibi Zero Chat? I know this is one of the ones where like, I look at this variant and I don't know. I don't know that I actually like this better. I like Invit Sunspot better in Hella decks. I think if you're gonna play Hella, you should just full gamble. I think, I, I think I'm waiting on a different zero variant before I spend boosters. His Ultron is gas though. It's a shame, shame the card's not very good. Yeah, I like the zero with the with the scorecard up. It's probably my favorite. Three hundred more credits. I don't think I have enough to get to here, right? I need four fifty to get to here. I have four twenty five. Okay, so technically, if I do a couple of twenty five upgrades, we could get there, right? All right, one more, one more dopamine box, please. We'll upgrade. We'll upgrade a couple of greens. We'll throw. We'll throw. We'll click on all variants and upgrade some greens here in a second. Just looking to see if there are any other purples I wanted. This is a variant, right? You think I like this one the best? I, think I like this one the best. Yeah, I was counting the 50 credits on the path, Jet. All right. What are artworks I would like to upgrade? I like my Daredevil variant. All the grades, nah. Maybe at some point, I don't know. As long as I have artworks that I like to prioritize, like I guess if I do all of them eventually, it's like meaningful. But I don't know. There's a lot of there's a lot of grades here. I'd rather just like have artworks of things I like have better cosmetics than get like a first discount on everything. Cause like a lot of these cards, I'm never gonna play, right? So it's just like, I only I only go through and pick out grays with like, like eventually I'm gonna like upgrade him, right? I got a grayscale one of this guy, Inkify. And like this is, I'm mostly upgrading variants that I'm playing with. Ooh, the white, the white border looks like that. That looks nice. I mean, I do wanna progress my collection level as much as possible to maximize getting tokens, but I guess if you add all of these up, it's meaningful. That's one. How many rows do I have? It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. 32 times four is 128. So at 60, at 64 free levels, which is approximately, what, four extra caches, five extra caches? Hey, thanks for dropping into a live one, gay dog. And it's a 3,200 credit saving. All right, maybe I'll do that at some point. Maybe when I get my, maybe when I get my bulk of credits tonight, we'll do that bunch of those.
bulk of credits tonight. Yeah, every day you could buy 2,200 credits, Jet. Why do you think the regular Mr. Negative deck is better than the Surfer deck? Because in my experience playing the Surfer Negative deck, you need both Mr. Negative and Surfer for it to be good. And that means your deck's not very consistent. What's going on? Issues? Why does this list not have Bast? Because I don't have Bast in my collection. Yeah, I would replace uh, Mojo with Best if I had it. Okay, so I think this is Bishop into Blue Marvel. This leaves us the flexibility to Mystique Blue Marvel next turn, but it also leaves us the flexibility to draw Iron Man and then Mystique Iron Man, potentially. Yeah, I mean, Iron Man, Iron Man can win left still, Jet. Okay, and now there's a question of would I rather Mystique Iron Man or would I rather Mystique Blue Marvel to get extra stats on the left? I mean, I, I'm not actually sure what's better here. So Blue Marvel left will add three power and then he'll double it, meaning we'll go to 46. Oh, Red Skull's here too though, right? The question is, do I think I need Iron Man to win the right? I might need Iron Man to win the right. I probably don't need it to win the left. What about Cosmo, chat? Cosmo is there. Iron Man is fine. Yeah, the, the question is, is Iron Man enough to beat whatever they're going to play to this path afterwards? They didn't play there. God bless. And we beat their arrow. Good beats. I am Iron Man. I would like to dedicate this game win to the idiot in chat that I timed out for saying we got wrecked this game. Not understanding your position and the ways that you can be winning is probably why you're hard stuck at rank 30. This deck puts an incredible amount of power into play on the final turn. Also, this game is a good example of why I like this deck better than the surfer negative deck because we didn't draw Mr. Negative this game, right? And we just went magic into Sarah into play our cards out. Like this game really highlights the strength of this archetype. Like look at the stats that we put into play with no negative in sight. Just absolutely phenomenal. Yes, also showed the strength of Sarah. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Yes, you may step as well. Please leader me. Please leader me. Please leader me. I've never wanted to be leadered so badly in my life. Okay, that's a fair snap back. That's a fair snap back. We, uh, we have a game, as the kids say. We have a game. Don't hit my bishop. All right. Woo! Do we have a game though, chat? Do we, do we have a game though? Oh. 
Oh, shit. I just, I kind of don't even know what to do with my hands. That is a fantastic Shulk split. Card looks really good with the rainbow background. What are the odds we get waved here, chat? I, I kind of want to hold my plays for the last turn to extract cube equity here. I feel like the odds of us getting waved is low, right? Oh, we could get leached. We could get leached. Okay, I'm going to play around leech. And actually, I want to play these. I want to play these right, right? Rather than fighting over this, Let's just do this. I played those in the right order, right? Yeah. Why would they have leech and infant? A lot of people have been putting leech inside of lockjaw. Yes! Fuck you, green man! Get out of my house! Nummy, nummy. Turn one negative, better than turn one infinite chip. Man, it's been a while since I played this deck. This, this deck's really good, chip. I, I cannot overstate how much, one of the questions I've been asked the most since series four and series five got added is Jeff, why haven't you updated your top five deck lists? Um, all of the decks on my top five deck lists are still great. Like the formats have changed, the details have moved around a little bit, but like this is literally, <laughs> this deck list is card for card the same deck list I was playing when Marvel Snap was in closed beta and Mr. Negative had four points of power. It's, it's, it's actually just card for card the same deck from three months ago. Yes, Mr. Negative had four power at one point. Four, four power. Yes. And magic got nerfed and Mr. Negative has negative one power now instead of four. And the deck is still great, which this deck's been nerfed four times. So like, again, I really can't overstate how much if they nerf things, things still stay playable. Well, Sarah and Angela got nerfed, but their upgrades in some spots in this deck, so they're kind of side grades. I don't count Sarah and Angela as nurses. Oh, Bishop got nerfed too. Good call. Soren, thanks for the three years. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, Angela, Bishop, and Sarah are all nerfs. Like, they changed, but they are better in some spots, worse than others. Might be losing another card on turn four, Chip. That is a wonderful card to know about. I think, I think we snap here, he says, before Mirror Dimension copies Sokovia and discards Mr. Negative. All right, thankfully we don't have to find out which parallel reality we're living in. Thankfully, thankfully, we didn't have to find out we were gonna lose. There was gonna be a 50%er there followed by a 25%er possibly. But we all we all know how it ends up there most of the time. Never lucky rubber ducky. Which we will have an emote for later tonight. Deadpool duck. 
is, uh, is, is ready. All right, chat. Psylocke, Mr. Negative. I'm sure Icebox is gonna flip up or Adelan's gonna shuffle our hand back in or something that I'm not thinking about is gonna mess this up. But I, I, I bet you should basically always snap Psylocke into negative in this deck, I think. We have Iron Man, Blue Marvel, and Mystique all in our deck still. And Sarah and Magic too. This is a spicy, spicy negative. No! Sad. Okay, the, the really good cards are still in our deck, but it's a little sad to draw Magic there. This is Angela Mojo. And I think we mojo here because they're likely to fill. Really? <laughs> We're snapping me. White Queen incoming. I mean, White Queen is kind of mediocre against us, right? Mm, Scorpion is punishing for not playing on Iron Man. And then we need to play these out to play around Leech here, right? Do you believe in magic and turn seven? Do 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 Oh, we are technically losing the left here until we draw a blue marble, right? are guaranteed to draw Blue Marvel next turn. I'm guaranteed to draw Blue Marvel next turn. And there's, I'm guaranteed to draw Blue Marvel and it costs three. Am I supposed to play Sarah this turn? What if I play Bishop and Rogue to try and fill this if they lead her? These get bigger with Blue Marble too. Okay, if I do this, this here, this is, um, This is 10, 12 here, so we're winning here, and we add eight here and six here. And I played Sarah first to play around leader copying my blue marvel. Oh, Sarah gets plus one is 13, good shout. So if they just pass and soak sunspot, we win center and right. Not playing Sarah last turn was punishing into the White Queen. It's a little unfortunate. Okay, so they lose, because we win left. God, this deck is good. Victory. Thanks for the eight cubes, bud. Abyssal, thank you for the almost four years. Appreciate it. Welcome back. Dusto wins. Thanks for reopening for the second month. How critical is magic? She's, she makes this deck much better. The core 
pull three cards in this deck, in my opinion, are Mr. Negative, Mystique, Psylocke, Magic, Sarah. And I know that that's a lot, and you obviously can play this without some of those, but to get this deck operating at maximum level, the only replacement cards in this deck are Mojo and Rogue. You can play it without them, but you will lose more games. Like they, they are critical to making this deck be consistent. You don't think Bishop and Angela are playful? Bishop and Angela are series one and two cards. Everybody has them. I would I would agree that I would always play Angela and Bishop in this deck, but they're not in the discussion about must-haves because everybody has them. If you're looking for, if you're one of the many people in chat asking me right now for replacements, chat, find your favorite one, two, or three energy cards that have low powers and play them. They're all varying degrees of situationally better or worse. Take it as a deck building exercise and find yourself some cards that are good or fine with Mr. Negative and play those. Like Mojo's a good example, right? Mojo's not even a card that's explicitly good with Mr. Negative. It's just not explicitly bad with Mr. Negative, right? It's just like fine. So yeah, don't play something like Lizard that when you Mr. Negative it, it's going to be bad. So like find something that's neutral at worst. This is a tempo rogue chat. Let's put some stats in the middle. If I don't draw Mystique, I might snap here. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna snap on the magic draw for sure. We get to Mr. Negative here. It dies to Hala. We get to magic into Sarah into draw. And again, this is why magic is so good, chat. Magic means I get to draw a third Mr. Negative card this game. Is why is why magic is good. I think with double Iron Man, we have a decent shot of winning winning this game, right? So we're definitely chilling. Big vibin', big vibin'. Friendly neighborhood Spider-Man here. Ha <laughs> ha! They snapped because they thought uh they thought it was gonna be the last turn. Sorry, bud. We get to get to play here next turn, thanks. We do get in trouble with Leech here, but if they don't have Leech, we're in a spot. This is one of the games that we just don't have the agency to play around Leech, and sometimes that's going to happen, chat. You can't can't always beat it. What if they Storm? If they Storm or Leech, they get us, chat. Can't, can't beat those cards. I'm not expecting Storm out of the cards that they've played. Leech is a possibility. Any deck playing Electro right now could be playing Leech, but I don't think, I don't think Storm is likely. They could have Odin. Odin the Spider-Man Spider would win the game. That's for, that's true. Absorbing Man as well. Yep. I think Odin and Absorbing Man are less likely given the fact that they're playing Professor X, but obviously a lot of people play a lot of Bruise and Snap, so could be things that could happen here. Ooh, does that beat us? Only well, get to make two plays now, right? So wave, wave is pretty good. I think, I think that's uh, that was. This is well played from the opponent here. I believe, I believe we have died to wave. Good, good sequencing from the opponent here. They, they almost assuredly lose this if they don't wave. If they just like play a big thing. I mean, Iron Man mid and Mystique right is literally only 12 points here and loses to like anything. Staying in here for four more cubes is an awful play. 
You want an Iron Man and Mystique, right? Nah, I don't think that's good enough. That puts us to 24, and then I don't want to. I don't really want a coin flip for that many cubes. Plus, they could have. Plus, they could have something random in there too that still gets us. Red Eye Jedi, thanks for the brand new Prime. Appreciate it. And Loopy Liddy, thanks for re-upping for the second month. We got Null today and three days ago got Galactus in a cash. That's some sick beats. Yes, they had priority. You can also get Cosmode or something there. Yes, Wave is basically a better Sandman, is an accurate statement. I think move decks will ever be good. Not unless something get really big. They need a new tool. Another Electro deck, eh? Do I Electro? Assuming they're going to Galactus us. I think yes. I'm gonna miss your negative left because I think they're about to Galactus us. Just destroyer, eh? Okay. Said. We could get punished for our gambit here because they destroyed. I think being cute with the Electro is gonna lose us the game chat. That's sad. I passed them a bunch of bad cards, right? What was the highest power of things that I passed them, Jet? Anybody remember? Oh, three, but there's a Wolverine. Rats. Wolverine, Wolverine, he says. Well played on the opponent's part. It looked like they had the Galactus, so they just chose not to not to jam it sooner. Hey, D Donkey, thanks for the brand new prayer. Appreciate it. How'd you feel about a card that protects locations so they can't be changed? That could be a neat design space. Really a unique idea. I think Adam Warlock is a bad, unplayable card, and I would never play it in any of my decks. What about Bast with him? Did I stutter, chat? When I, said, when I said he was bad and unplayable, was there something unclear there or did you need more quantifiers? So a zero cost Iron Man can slip into Crimson Cosmos. It's kind of fun.
top five locations that need to go away. Well, you see, unlike many people, I'm not a whiny crybaby, so I don't think there's any locations that need to go away, Chad. I think all of the current locations are fine. All right, so we're going to play Sarah here. And then next turn, we get to go Iron Man here, Mystique the Iron Man, and then Rogue the Punisher. He says before getting leeched. Wongers! All right, Wongers could change the dynamic here, right? Am I supposed to Iron Man middle now because of Wongers? I don't think I can. Suddenly things have gotten a little monka yet. Oh, I could Rogue Wong. No, I don't have priority. I can't Rogue Wong yet. Uh, thanks. I am Iron Man. Gonna be close on the right. I think we're good once Rogue copies. I am Iron Man. Because Rogue takes away power and then also adds a bunch. We need some of these to go right. Okay. Yeah, we're good. We're good. We're good. Again, chat. Best eight cube deck in the game. This one. This one right here. Victory. Best stay cube deck in the game. How are... Okay, this is... Okay, this is actually a good thing. Let's talk about this. I'm cool with most locations, but how are five rocks make plays more interesting? For example, two or three rocks, sure. What I'm about to say is an opinion, so if you disagree, feel free to keep it to yourself. In my opinion, locations that occasionally create non-games are good for Marvel Snap to exist. Because games that you quickly win or quickly lose due to variance allow you to have a small brain break during sessions of gameplay that allow you to play the game for longer periods of time and thus enjoy it for more time periods. In my opinion, part of the reason why Rune Terra failed to click for a lot of people is because it explicitly lacked those brain breaks as part of its core design. I played a lot of Rune Terra for people that are new to the challenge. People always pop up and they're like, you don't understand Rune Terra. I played nothing but Rune Terra for almost six months. And that game is mentally exhausting to play. I could I, I could play, I could stream Magic for 12 or even 24 hours I'd done. I can play Snap for 12 or 16 hours and feel reasonable at it. I feel like someone punched me in the fucking mouth after playing four or five hours of Rune Terra because it, it explicitly lacked those non-games where you just get to kind of take a breather and refresh. And I get it that those games kind of feel annoying or you feel like you should be in every single game, but just click the retreat button and leave for one cube and take a deep breath and move along with your with your session. I think, I think those types of designs that give you those, okay, we're gonna pause for a moment here, essentially, are key to what allows Marvel Snap to be so addicting and play be played so much. Snap. 
Dehydrated Vampire, thank you for the brand new Prime, and Blads, while we were rambling. The Drift of the Magic System, from Magic to Snap, has been great to watch. Thank you for taking time to advocate for such a great game and making the learning experience easier for people. Thank you for the almost three years, Blad. Appreciate it. Opponent snapped me on one. This could be a bot. Some of these bots snap on one. My hand's only okay, though. I think I'm leaving in case they're not a bot and their hand's just good. For people that are new to this channel, by the way, a few follows in there, welcome. Uh, my name is Jeff Oakland. I've been streaming here on Twitch for over a decade. I've been playing card games for uh, over 20 years. I've been doing this as a full-time job for five. Before I fell backwards into making content here on Twitch, I have a graduate degree and an undergraduate degree in mathematics. I'm a very analytically focused person. So I've got a lot of uh, educational experience. I got a, a lot of background in education, very analytically minded. In general, I know that that's a thing people do in other streams, but please don't do the posture and hydrate in my channel. It comes off as, I, I really, it just kind of greets me. Don't don't worry, I drink, I drink, this is a 32 ounce bottle of water. I finish it every stream and then some. And I stand for half of my stream. So if I want to slouch a little bit in my chair with lumbar support, let me slouch. What was my favorite math course? The, um, my master's project was about analyzing uh, network graphs. So that, that subject area, in addition to calculus, are some of my favorites. All right, Mojo into Mojo's world, easy turn two. A long, long time ago, I had ancestors that immigrated from the Netherlands to America, but I am very American. Mixed heritage for many generations. Immigration is great, chat. And screw all the bigots who think otherwise. Yeah, it looks like we're playing against Cerebro 2 here, which probably makes winning Mojo World difficult to impossible for us. This is probably going to be a retreat angle. We'll see how it plays out, though. Like, most of our best cards to get as zero costs are, like, in our hand already. We could peel Sarah next turn, I suppose. Oh, this is such a good Hobgoblin. Such a good hobgoblin for the opponent here. This card is so good in Cerebro 2 chat. It always amazes me when people want to cut it. Yeah, we're very, very, very good here. Punt the one Cuba Rooney. Move along with our lives. Yeah, what are the Sokovia's discard? I lost magic. What did they lose? Magic and vision. Thank you. Angela into Stark Tower, followed by Bishop, followed by Mr. Negative. Am I playing Ironheart into the tower? I think I am. Let's get this bonus on everything.
it's just a uh, Iron Man winning Stark Tower mid to save her the flavor, and then we can Mystique Iron Man on the right next turn, right? I don't think I want to snap because if we get leeched, we could be in trouble. But I am Iron Man. All systems go. Sucker playing against Lockjaw. So will put us to. This actually might not be enough to stay in for here, right? Twenty four on the right, which is only plus uh, only eight to beat us. Let's flip a coin for a cube. I am Iron Man. Yeah, I probably overcommitted the Stark Tower this game. I just looked at my Twitch recap and I spent so much time here. Also, 100 bit cheers add up. Thank you, Beetle. They really do. All right, I'm gonna do a couple more with this and then we'll move along to building another viewer deck. We're just kinda close to 90, so I wanted to see if we could get the gold, but it'll be fine. We'll hit 90 at some point this month. We got like two weeks left. Snap, turn three negative. <sighs> Ever a lucky rubber ducky. My God. I mean, at least District X is also not great for the Thanos deck, is, uh, is definitely a mood. Hoping to draw a one drop next turn. So that way we could go Iron Man plus one drop into District X on the right to have a chance to win that. Oh! Oh, I didn't realize negative or Venom was gonna slide. Losing by one. Ah, oh, we're so close. This. Hello. Yeah, we need a, need a blue marvel or something that could get extra extra couple points in here.
Any tips versus frustration? Yeah, take a break. Just take a break. Play a different deck. Stop caring about your cubes. Why did I escape and not take the loss? Because I didn't want to lose double the cubes. Punting the mid shit. Well, they're filling their expansion is an interesting choice. All right, my ninja is slightly less bad. Just Iron Harding. We're hoping to draw magic next turn. Well, if we weren't punting the middle before. Mystique, please. Is plus three enough to win the left? I think it's gotta be. I am Iron Man. I am Iron Man. Satisfying experience in Marvel Snap. There's so much play and agency in this game, and then that card just shows up and it just gets rid of all of it. Anything that wins against leader, I've been playing a lot of She-Hulk wave. Yeah, this is she, I I absolutely love She-Hulk, but she's basically unplayable into into Leech Leader. We could totally build. We could totally build a non Thor Lockjaw deck. Skiavi. Skiavi. This is your pool, and I am down to build a non Thor Lockjaw deck. We have Yellow Jacket and Wasp here. How would I nerf Leader? I. What, what if my non gameplay video tomorrow morning on the YouTube channel? is titled seven ways to fix leader so for people that keep asking that question there'll be a whole bunch of whole bunch of thought on that up in the morning You know what the worst thing is, chat? This isn't even the worst abomination variant I've seen this week. Do you want to see the stone cold worst abomination variant? You want to see a real abomination, chat? This thing is fucking hideous. Absolutely atrocious. Just the worst possible thing you could imagine for, for an abomination variant. All right, let's build. Uh, let's build Lockjaw here. I heard that's coming to the store for ninety nine bucks. What a steal! <laughs> uh, 
Dies of dies of cringe. Little deck building tip. Two two ton twenty one. Thank you for the sub gifties. Appreciate that. Little deck building tip. You see how I've searched for four cards and there's infinite copies here, chat? Toggle off all variants and you only see one copy of each card. Vision and Jubilee in this deck. I'm not gonna lie, chat. Part of the reason why I like this archetype so much is because it gets to play some of my favorite variants in the game. I'm really looking forward to having a Sunspot variant. It's one that I haven't opened. Excited for a real PC client. Maybe, I don't really mind the mobile client. It's like not a big deal. There's only one sunspot in the client right now? No, there's a variant. There's at least one variant. Uh What else do we want to do? So we're missing we're missing the Thors. Is what we need to build around. I usually like um I usually like White Tiger when we don't have Jane, because it's a five drop that adds power to the board that also triggers Lockjaw, which is nice. Then usually we play Hulk and Chavez. Then I'm always torn without three mana Thor. Do I want another piece of top end or do I want another thing that plays in the middle? They do have Dracula. Dracula is not a terrible shout because it's like kind of a thing you could play. You could play early. I like, I like the shout out for Dracula. And it is another card I have a banger variant for. Two banger variants. That one's not split yet though. You want to play Leech. Am I cringe enough to play Leech? I don't know. I like the idea of Dracula. I'm going to play Dracula yet. Listen, chat, even if Leech might be fine in general, he's currently guilty by association, okay? Maybe he has the potential to be a good kid, but he's hanging out with all the bad kids currently. Yes, if you don't have Wasp, you can play Yellow Jacket in that slot. Yeah, what's an easy way to summon Ego District X or another weird location like this? Hopefully Lockjaw goes mid here. All right, let's go. Urquan, thank you for the 24 months. I appreciate the two years. Welcome back. We do have a Dracula.
And this fills Lockjaw, which means my turn six play can't be Lockjaw. Okay, so you're saying there's a chance. I don't know if my body's ready for this Dracula to discard White Tiger, but... Oh my god, we played the White Tiger, but we also have Jubilee. Okay, but this puts seven power into the middle too, right? Yeah, 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 we're super good here. Confirm discarding Jubilee, yep. Are the 90s variants exclusive to the bundles or are they obtainable in other ways? I don't believe that's been confirmed one way or another yet. At least not that I've seen, but I would be surprised if they're not exclusive. Oh no, please don't leech me. I'll never be able to win the game. Ooh, this arrow is nasty. That is a nasty arrow. Are we dead? We might be dead. This pulls the dog out of the raft. Ah, let's play for a cube. Snap at a competitive circuit, would I compete? I generally prefer to do commentary, would be my first choice. But if I wasn't afforded my first choice, yeah, I'd probably try and play a little bit. Depends on what the format is. I'm really not a huge fan of multi-deck TCG formats. For people that are new to the channel, uh, last year, the Pokemon MOBA Pokemon Unite had their first competitive year. And they were a part of the Pokemon World Championships in London, and I was a part of the official esports team for that all year, including the World Championships. That type of stuff is in my wheelhouse. Yeah, I probably should have snapped them here. That's a good shout. All these locations kind of suck for us. So maybe I'm fine not stepping. I think maybe I'm chilling. Yeah, I haven't had a lot of time for playing non-snap games. Nice base stun, bro. And Pokemon, Pokemon Unite is just not, not super popular. There's not a lot of growth there. How hard cars, of course, Pokemon ain't pretty casual. Friendly neighborhood Spider Man here.
Hey, target dummy. Thank you for the 33 months. Welcome back. Appreciate you. I see them. One and two over here. Okay. Christy brought me a wrap for lunch, chat, but there's toothpicks in it. It's just you want to make sure I didn't injure myself while eating. We can soak in infinite. Yeah, maybe that's better. We are, in fact, about to die to leader cringe, yeah. They're thinking too much to play leader. You greatly underestimate, overestimate leader players. Banner hood is probably fine. What's in the wrap? Uh, cheese, buffalo sauce, lettuce, and plant-based chicken substitute. vegetarian yes what's my favorite control deck there is a luke cage and uh a luke cage has back control deck i'm a fan of that we've done highlights with a couple of times on the youtube channel here. I think we'll white tiger next turn. I do not know what a vampire survivor is. No. meat stuff is great. It's way easier to find food I am able to eat when I am out and about today than it was two decades ago when I became a vegetarian. Or a decade and a half? Decade and a half, yeah.
I'm gonna sunspot the sewer system because I want it protected from Killmonger Under Armor. I have not ever been to Asia. The only time I've ever been out of the, uh, the only time I've ever been out of North America is when I was in London for the Pokemon Unite Championships. it and then we draw Chavez next turn actually let's play this let's play this right this will be either 12 20 or 9 which is pretty good either way no matter how we slice it I think I play out wasp this turn as well because if they wave me I don't want to get caught by wave with the stuck in my hand Being a Dracula hate card really sucks. percent to win Twenty percent of chat. We're super lucky. more power here to play around spectrum right so i'm gonna soak and then infinite
The word soak has been ruined in my brain. Ah, there really is no limit to the things religion can ruin, is there? a good little wasp chat yes you are Actually, just glued to the top of her neck. Spending. Thanks for the prime. Appreciate it. I'm expecting Killmonger here, right? So we just White Tiger. White Tiger also beats Surfer. What if they Killmonger and Surfer? We still win, right? Killmonger or Surfer plus Killmonger is plus eight here, meaning they go to 13. Chip. Definitely the cat that came back. Hanging on to armor to tuck with lockjaw here. Well, shit. Uh, I really like, uh, 
I like the Captain Marvel variant, like the Goose Captain Marvel and the Mystique Captain Marvel. Oh, I can zero into Deathlock now, though, which is funny. Adventure, thanks for the tip. I don't really have any tips for the emote spam. I've been trying to remember to click on my opponent's portrait and mute them at the start of every game to avoid it, but it's honestly tough to remember. Looks like we're probably dead here, right? I give him a cube. Yeah, I wish, I really hope that they have auto squelch, auto mute, whatever you want to call it on their, their radar of things to do. Again, I like to just chill on these to start. If we have Lockjaw in hand. Hey, don't stay muted from game to game. That would, that would also be a nice feature. I'd accept that over, uh, <sighs> I'd accept that over auto squelch too. Just like remember which individual players I mute. So when someone's an idiot, I can mute them. Hey, Maxi, thanks for the prime. Appreciate it. And Baku just won me my first game. He's a good lad. Wasp sitting here making up for all the games. It was excellent. <sighs> hey, well, thanks for dropping by to a live one, Maxime. This matchup seems atrocious for us. They just put way bigger things into play than we do, and we have no interaction. Even, even if we hadn't hit a Wasp here, right? Like a... Taskmaster or an Artem Zola just like firmly puts us in the ground. Our deck, their deck is what I'm looking forward to playing when Shuri downgrades the series four, but I'm definitely not spending 6,000 tokens on her. All right, chat, we're gonna do, we're gonna do another build around here in a second, but I need to run to the bathroom before I do that. Yogurt fan, thanks for the prime. I'm gonna tap the add buttons because I'm walking away anyways. Don't go anywhere. We got plenty more Marvel Snap coming up today. BRB.
stand up for a little bit too now that we're back. Rise up, gamers. Shop reset in another minute. Will Atuma be in my shop for the fifth reset in a row? Therein lies the question. All right, this pool has more in it than not, huh? Might be into a disruptive deck. Kingpin, Doc Ock, Magneto. I've been playing a lot of Dirty 30, 40, Trust Your Gut, No Thor Locked Jaw. We can build a disruptive deck with Kingpin and Magneto. I think that's fine. Magneto's like reasonable into... Uh... Actually, I think I have I have just the deck for this, uh, this request. I have a deck in my deck under I played a little bit of off stream. I'm not sure how it is. I'm not sure how it is into the Leech deck. Maybe it's not great into that, but I've been, um... I have this put together, which is actually a... a Kingpin, Arrow, Magneto pile of stuff. Give... let's give this one a try. This might be... this might be bad into Leader Leech Cringe. We'll see. A Mox Platinum. Thanks for the two months. Appreciate you re-upping. Welcome back. Someone asked about slow mode for the chat. Yeah, I've been I've been missing too many sub alerts and messages from folks, so non-subs are gonna be in slow mode moving forward. As the channel's grown up, I wanna make sure I can still keep interacting with folks. When we played magic, magic players are kind of obnoxious, so we use sub only mode there. Open chat's been pretty reasonable in general though, so I don't wanna I don't want to do sub only mode. Slow mode's kind of like an in between for sub mode and open ship. Hey, look, chat. Atuma has been in my shop for 40 hours straight now. When does he start paying rent? At some point, I start collecting interest on collector collector tokens, right? What are what are the odds of having Atuma in my shop for 40 hours straight? It's 0.6 to the 5, right? It actually isn't even all that unlikely. It's an almost 8% chance to have a Tuma in my shop for five shops in a row. Which again, highlights why this system being purely variance is not a great idea because it's not even that much of a low roll to have an incredibly bad experience with it. It is not a bug, so for people that are coming in, Atuma is my only Series 4 card that is left. So the shop is not guaranteed to show me a different series every time it rolls. So it keeps rolling the 60% chance to show me a Series 4 card. It should definitely be pseudo-random. It definitely should not be completely random. Jeff, I have 40 series three cards left and I have seen a tuba four times, including right now. Why have you summoned him? Well, I mean, that's my fifth in a row. So that means I've seen him like eight times. If it makes you feel better. What card am I hoping shows up? I'm actually not even really waiting for anything at the moment, so I'm not really annoyed. I am uh, I am hoping to get uh, Sentry or Darkhawk next week when they release. Ooh, 
why not enable the crafting of any cards you want with shards? Because they want collecting to be an experience in Marvel Snap that takes time. They want it to be exciting when you get a card, not trivial. They want to make your lizard brain feel dopamine. Oh no! They locked in our boy, Chip. Uh, this is fine though, right? We go Arrow plus She-Hulk and we even beat Destroyer here. I'm gonna snap them here. They might be overconfident and stay. I think this is a chance for our last turn staff. Right? They might chase them out, but I think there's a chance we keep them in here. Yeah, thanks for the cubes, bud. Yoink. Destroyer left does not win. Arrow would like him to come visit in the center. I like Marvel Snap's collection method. I think it keeps players chasing cards in a way that's efficient and good for long-term player retention. I think the collector token shop needs a few of its rough edges ironed out. I've talked about this before, but I think I think there are there are there are, there's one of two changes they could make to the token shop to make it reasonable. The first is really simple. There just shouldn't, you could make it so there's no repeats at all until you've seen every card. Currently, it re it doesn't repeat through series, but you should see every series three card and every series four card and every series five card and every variant before you see any repeats. That's, that's one way they could fix it. The other way would be making it so you see every series in a fixed ratio, meaning for every one ultimate variant, you see two series five cards and for every series five card, you see two series four cards and for every series four card, you see two series three cards. And then you could have repeats within the series, but you're guaranteed to get rid of people getting really unlucky. Like for example, me having a two of five shop rolls in a row. I think, I think either of those solutions would be reasonable. Like either either of those fixes make the shop functional and reasonable. It's the best She-Hulk deck in my opinion. I really like the Moon Girl She-Hulk deck that I've played a good bit of, but it's explicitly very bad into Leech and Leaders, so your mileage may vary in the current metagame. Do I want to put Lizard into Clintar? Yeah, I think I'm actually going to Lizard Clintar and then maybe Storm Clintar after. Jones drawn here. I think I'm actually going to play her in the Baxter building and then I will wave middle on turn five and that sets us up for a big turn six with She-Hulk here. We're hoping, I was just about to say we're hoping to draw Arrow or um, Magneto and Arrow will do just fine.
even if we get leached here, we're gonna be okay, right? Because if they leech us into the Baxter building, we'll be ahead there, and then we'll arrow them in the middle on the last turn, meaning we win Baxter and Flooded, most likely. We could lose to something like Doctor Doom, but we're in a pretty good spot here. I'll snap them. The, Ch the Chad snap while they have Daredevil looking at my turn five play. Oh yeah, that's true. Leech would shut off our arrow. We still have uh, still have a ten power thing to put into play though. Maybe maybe we're less good. Monka Monka leech. Okay, just a devil dinosaur. So we go arrow here, She-Hulk here, die to something that cheats power into here. I think is a play that I'm happy with. Here, bud. Hey, this is just just textbook what we're what we're looking to have happen here. We make some early plays, we tee up wave on turn five, we She-Hulk plus Arrow or She-Hulk plus Magneto. We have a new Marvel Snap roadmap. Let's take a look at it, huh? All right, development roadmap. Coming soon, battle mode versus friends, name change, artist credits, Russian and Vietnamese language support, infinity split mod details, Wonder if the article says what that means. We'll have to see. In development, PC widescreen UI, smart decks, unranked new competitive modes. All right, it explains these in depth. Okay, let's take a look at the actual article then, huh? Battle mode versus friends is a new way to play Marvel Snap. In battle mode, each player starts with 10 health. The winning player deals damage to their opponent equal to the stakes of the game. If you double down and snap, she'll deal four instead of two or retreat and lose one. Sure, sure, sure. So we know, we know this. The way it works is simple. You can create or join a match. The player creates a match, gets a code they'll share with a friend. Okay, so this is everything we need to run community tournaments in theory. You'll finally be able to change your username. When you're looking at a card in detail view, you'll be able to tap on the nameplate to see artists or credits and what infinity split mods are on it. Okay. Our smart decks. Creating a new deck can be fun. Sometimes you might know precisely which 12 cards you want to play. Other times a few cards work together, but you're unsure what to add. That's where smart decks come in. Maybe you're unsure how to finish the move deck you want to play. No problem. You'll be able to finish the deck with a tap of the button. More details as we get closer to this feature. This is really sweet. This is a really neat idea. Like, kind of, uh, okay, the, the game's going to recommend how to fill in the blanks from your collection. This will be... If this is... If this is implemented well, this is really... This is really a great thing to do. Yeah, 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 right? It automatically adds leader to every deck. Yes, I am super looking forward to um, build the deck, cut the cards you don't own, and then click the smart add button to finish it out. That sounds that sounds lovely. That I am super looking forward to that being my programmed response. They're looking to use battle mode in fun new ways. Hopefully, competitive mode will include a spectator client chip. If we get a spectator client, I'm looking forward to running tournaments. These are things that are in concept, so not happening anytime soon. Guilds and social systems, ranked leaderboard, 
collectible emotes and card emojis, mythic variants, booster magnets. I assume booster magnets are a way to target cards. PC controller support. Wait, like to play with a gamepad? Interesting. That's probably fine. For reference, in an earlier development update, they told us that the PC widescreen UI could be expected in summer of 23. And summer in the US is June, July, August for people that live outside the US. So probably a six to seven month time frame on a lot of these, hopefully. And then this coming soon is hopefully, hopefully Q1. Yeah, make it play on Steam Deck or perhaps like, this game probably plays really well on the Nintendo Switch. If you have uh game probably plays well on the Nintendo Switch if you have uh have controller support. Gamepad support is big for people with disabilities too. That's a good shout. Reality is whatever Thanos wishes it to be. This is a matchup that's probably not going to be good for us because they clog the board up, which means our arrow and our Magneto are not going to be great on the final turn. However, we can just put a big mess of stats into play potentially. Ongoing effects here are doubled. Read. Opponent snapped. I think I'm leaving. I think this match is bad for us. Our hand's only okay. Escaped. Uh, we are currently doing deck submissions. I am filled up for the stream. When I close deck submissions for the day, typically I do not reopen them. If you're someone that wants to get a deck submission in, you're typically going to want to be here bright and early. I like Cerebro 2 the best. There's a Cerebro 2 deck list in my Friday favorites video from this morning that I think is my favorite Cerebro list. And we storm the peak to then undo it. Unfortunately, no. So we're hoping to draw Magneto here to win the flooding down the line. I'm supposed to wave this turn so I can magneto these into bar sinister on turn five.
don't have priority here. So if they play into Bar Sinister this turn, we get into trouble. But typically, they want to do that on the last turn, I think. Sick. Come here, friends. This game's a fun example of showing how we kind of understand what our game plan is, but we also know when we need to pivot off of that game plan to react to what our opponent is doing. Uh, this is technically a viewer submission, but they had a lot of the cards in Marvel Snap, and this is a deck list that I've had sitting in my deck editor that I haven't had a chance to play outside of theory crafting. It feels pretty good, honestly. It's playing a bunch of my favorite cards. Arrow is usually a turn six play in this deck, so she doesn't really enable, she doesn't really enable Miles. I think not enough games go the full six rounds. Nah, I think it's fine, the current, the way things break out a lot of the time. Would I replace She-Hulk with? I wouldn't. The cards in the deck name are not replaceable. A goose here, and then we'll storm into Jones and the Chikagulia. Oh, I'm gonna snap them here because Karmataj is locking them out of making big plays, and then Storm is gonna lock them out of playing anything here past next turn. And then Sanctum's obviously the Sanctum, right? So I think we wanna snap here before Storm flips up. Win. It's a little scary. They have two hammers and they both double. Okay, they have a copy of our She-Hulk now. Huh? Yeah, wave, right? They can't leech Chet. They can't play cards here because of Goose. Goose is really good in this deck too, right? Because I can play She-Hulk into the Goose lane. And now the way Goose works here, we're guaranteed to win, right? Because no four costs can be played here and we could each play a She-Hulk. Wait, are we guaranteed to win? We're down one. Their She-Hulk is too bigger than ours because of Scorpion. So they go to 16. We are th yeah, we're up by one, right? They can't Mjolnir, chat. Mjolnir costs four, and Goose says you can't play four drops. Victory. Yeah, Goose, Goose Wave is a combo. Yeah, that was a sick game too. an utterutilized design space in Snap you'd like to see used more. Um, the, the one I've mentioned in the past, they actually have coming up. I would like to see cards that directly manipulate priority. And there's one of those in the data mine for Ghost. Is Kingpin necessary for this deck? Not at all. It makes your arrow and your Magneto a little bit better in spots, but I think he's definitely replacement level.
Arrow has a lot of potential against a lot of invisible women decks. You can explain what curve means. Curving in a card game refers to using all of your resources every turn. So playing on curve means you have one energy to spend on turn one, two on two, three on three, etc. That's a good question. Win. I'm not gonna be able to contest this here, unfortunately. I don't know if we can actually win here, huh? So they only discarded Captain Marvel. But if they go hella into Marvel here, that's gonna be 10. And I need to She-Hulk. Oh, I can't She-Hulk here. Yeah, I think we're just dead here, unfortunately. Storming in the middle on turn three is probably wrong. You think two, three, four, five, six, seven energy overturns will lead to more dynamic gameplay? That's an interesting thought. I don't know. That's a big, that's a big change. Like the whole game is balanced around one energy per turn. All right, we have Storm for the Mindscape for later. I'm gonna commit the Iceman there. If I'm planning to Storm there, I want a little extra power potentially. If I Goose here, it locks people out of playing six drops in general, but I have Magneto, so I probably don't wanna do that. So I think I just Goose mid. This is a snap you angle. Before they see mindscapes going away. here and then we can she hulk next turn potentially for four we'll have to she hulk to the right though we can go lizard left and then she hulk into magneto in the shadowlands could outsize us on the left because I, I assume they're going to be able to fill the Shadowlands before Magneto can pull over. Now that's interesting. So... We can play into the left side again here now. If 
They're probably a surfer deck, right? I just feel like there's no chance Magneto fills anything. I could move anything on the last turn. I think I just dropped She-Hulk left here. Really? They played mid. Okay. All right. And then I'm hoping that 19 holds here, right? And that 12 is enough over here. It's the only place anyone can play. Hey, thanks for up on that prime for a second month info. Folks like you make my job possible. Thanks for keeping me around. Even if they go like surfer plus max here, we still win the right. I'm pretty sure the surfer deck's gonna make two plays here into the Shadowland. So Magneto pulling is like a non thing basically. Generally speaking, Wave is not optional in the decks that play Wave. She is a unique key enabler. I actually think the only exception to Wave not being optional is probably this deck that the opponent's playing, the Patriot Surfer deck. Is like the Wave is only okay here, it's just ramping to Sarah. But most decks that play Wave like Agatha or this one, they have to have her, or they just don't work as efficiently. Should I be saving my gold to buy credits to, or should I, be, should I be using my gold to buy credits to move my collection along? I have a full breakdown on saving gold versus spending it right away here. So you can make the choice that best works for you with all the math laid out. Do I want to lock the biggins out of the lab? I kind of do. We'll play these out here. We'll drop Jessica Jones on the right on turn four. We'll wave in the middle turn five and have Magneto and She-Hulk for the last turn. Oh no! Okay, 10. 10 power lizard in the space throne could be worse. There are worse things than 10 power lizard in the space throne. Okay, I think we kingpin on the right now though, huh? I think I'm gonna snap them actually with the Kingpin draw. Because now we'll Kingpin into Wave, into She Hulk and Magneto as we see fit. I did cover the Marvel Snap roadmap live on stream already. I will be talking about that more in an in depth video later tonight on the YouTube channel after I'm no longer live for the day. I already snapped here. Kingpin in Hell's Kitchen is a solid flavor win. You're not wrong. Wave setting up the Kingpin is also pretty strong because it basically ensures they can't fill this Kingpin path on the last turn, right? Oh no! Ooh. Well, awkward. Did they get us? I think they got us with the goose check. Well, can they put anything into the space throne? I guess they could have Max, huh? Max gets us.
Does Surfer get us? Surfer only puts them to 26 here and I'm going to 34. Yeah, we're good against Surfer. Close. Yeah, I think it's worth staying in here. We lose to Max, but they probably think Surfer is good enough. And it's not. Victory. Goose, Goose plus Wave is a sweet combo. Is that our level 90 game? I think that's our level 90 game, right? Get some gold. Yeah, sweet. Look at that. Oh, I lose to Max. Oh, you're right. I was thinking Max was 14, but he's not. He's only seven on the left. You're right. We were good. We weren't losing to Max. Nice. And I don't really care about a title, so... That was the last kind of meaningful thing. That's like, saves me five bucks at some point. You need she hulk to run this deck. Yes. The cards in the deck name are not optional. I'd have lost to Max Mid. They literally couldn't play Max Mid because of Wave. As I pointed out several times, Wave plus Goose is a combo. Any variants I'm on the lookout for? I really want the Silver Juggernaut variant, and I really want the Dami Mami Angela variant, are the two, two I'm looking for. Speaking of great variants, this is a wonderful one. He's ready, ready to drop a fat mixtape here. Wind aid my hand. Okay, what are they doing with Wave on turn three after they filled their board? Is this an Agatha deck? Smell, smells like Agatha, right? I'm gonna arrow to the left because it lets me win the flooding here later. Oh, they were Agatha earlier. Got it. I miss. I missed that Agatha got discarded to Blade. Also, that the location was moving. Are we good to go then? I think we're good to go then, right? How do they get? They could have like Doctor Doom, I guess. So we could, Doctor Doom beats us over here, huh? Come take my cubes, Dr. Doom. How oh, they place Hella in Ebony Maw. Arrow pulled her over. We're playing against Ocean Mud, by the way, chat. Another excellent Marvel Snap content creator. We just kicked our butt with Captain Marvel. Another card in addition to Doom that gets us there. Good game. to check them out if you're looking for their Marvel Snap Creator. Worth it to play a Hella deck without Ghost Rider. I think the real question is, 
Is it worth it to play a Hella deck even with Ghost Rider? Have Storm London here. How often do you bluff with snaps? I think bluffing in Marvel Snap is an incredibly negative EV play. You will lose far more cubes than you will win bluff snapping on average. Marvel Snap is essentially low stakes poker, and everybody is a hero when they play low stakes poker and they chase the rabbit and just want to see what happens at the end of the tunnel. Hey, Keaton the Great, thank you for the brand new Prime. That is a sick Mysterio variant. We got totally juked by, or sick Mysterio split, I should say. Juked by She Hulk here. Are we dead? I'm feeling kind of dead. Yeah, I think I'm leaving. You can take your cube. Poker has a saying, don't bluff a leader player. <laughs> L-O-L. Third is a lot of fun into Shuri's lab. My goose here though, and keeping the big things locked out of the lab sounds good. I'm wondering how many games do you try out a new deck idea before determining if it's optimal? Um, I almost never walk away from a deck list thinking it's optimal. It probably takes me about a dozen games to get a feel for, oh, is this fun or oh do i want to work on this some more but like figuring out if something's truly optimal is a pretty big ask honestly ice ice man is kind of a combo with uh with goose too in a way right Yeah, I get to Jones in the middle, and then we get to sneak She-Hulk into Shuri's lab on six. He snapped, right? All right, and then we drew Wave, which is actually just the best draw on the deck. Wave means I get to She-Hulk on the left and Magneto on the right. And I'll be stuck in the middle with her. Wakanda forever. So even if they move their Nightcrawler here, they can't play into here unless they also have a She-Hulk, which is possible. Not only is the metagame pretty varied in snap, help fi making finding optimal deck lists difficult, but optimal in snap is very different than optimal in other card games, right? In any other card game, a deck that only wins 25% of the time automatically gets written off because it's not consistent enough, right? But in Marvel Snap, if you have a deck that wins 25% of the time, but most of its wins are four and eight cube wins, it could be an incredibly good and competitive deck, right? So there's way more variables in snap deck building because of the snap mechanic than there are in other card games. Yeah, there's also decks that are location variants, makes it harder to get a feel for things too, right? Like in, in another card game, 
one of the one of the things I would always do when I was like playing competitive magic is sit there and play a matchup a ton of different times to get a feel for the matchup. Well, in Marvel Snap, two decks playing against each other is going to feel frequently quite different because of how the location variance plays into that. And in my opinion, the fact that you can't just sit there and memorize things and have to have experience with dynamic play, pay, play patterns thanks to the location variance actually makes the skill cap on Marvel Snap much higher. No, I'm really not a fan of the design direction Magic has gone in. Since Marvel Snap's able to be my full-time content these days, I don't play Magic anymore. It was mostly, was mostly just playing Magic to pay my bills for the last year or so. And I am very happy to get to stream a game that I actually like. Feels, feels good. All right, let's take a look at our next viewer submission here. Arcadence. I like to see Goose used well. If Goose isn't currently optimal, dealer's choice may not be around when my turn comes. We have Cerebro cards. Oh, I'd love to play some Cerebro too. We have Cerebro, we have Mystique, we have Goose, we have Brood. Those are all, they even have Daredevil here too. Yeah, Cerebro, Cerebro 2 is 100% a Goose deck and a fantastic deck that this card pool can support. Just double check that they have, uh, they have all the stuff. Hey, Arcadence, and honestly, if you're into Goose decks, if She-Hulk comes up for you, this deck was sweet. Looks like you have everything for this other than... Yeah, you have everything for this other than the She-Hulk. So keep uh, keep an eye out for that one if you have tokens around later. I actually posted a Thanos deck that I like uh, in my Friday Favorites video today, Holy Diva. You can sub M'Baku out for anything else that you like that's cheap. Lockjaw is the only other Series 3 card that you need for it. That's the one. Lockjaw is an important one. They are missing Mr. Baku, but that's fine. We can swap him for Iceman. That's probably optimal anyways. Much as it hurts me to say. I bet, I bet you'll really like Thanos, Diva. It has big, like, blue-red cantrip vibe. It's the closest thing to a blue-red cantrips deck that Marvel Snap has. I know you really like playing that style of deck in Magic. Is this deck viable without Brood and Daredevil? Daredevil is replacement level in this deck. Brood is really not. You could swap it with a different two-power thing, but the deck is much weaker without Brood. Brood is a unique, powerful effect. Generally, there isn't a replacement for it in decks that play it. So, Cerebro 2, I think, is actually better than Silver Surfer into the current meta deck 17F. And that's because the Cerebro decks get to play their extra power out onto the board proactively so they don't get leached and lose on turn six. Whereas Silver Surfer has to save their key card for the final turn. I think you could make a strong argument that Brood and Mystique would be better off as pull two cards. When so, Sarah has been a high request for my next um, ultimate deck guide thing, but I actually think that Sarah's in a pretty medium spot in the metagame right now because Sarah decks tend to not be good into leech decks. I think uh, Sarah is not what I'm going to do. I think my next deck guide is going to be around Hood. Hood is actually my most played Series 3 card. I've played a lot of it.
So, I don't know that I agree that I would put Hood into a good uh, selection for pool two. Because while you're right, Hood is a... You're right that Hood is a card that goes in a lot of stuff. Hood doesn't make or break any particular archetypes the way Brood and Mystique make or break archetypes. Brood and Mystique are basically unreplaceable in the decks that want them. She-Hulk Electro. That's a combo. Isn't Hood pretty essential for double up? No, not at all. It's It makes the deck better, but the deck still functions its core without it for sure. We know they have Doctor Doom. If I Nightcrawler here, it puts me to four. And then if I Blue Marvel, it puts me to eight, meaning we tie Doctor Doom here. And we tie Doctor Doom here. And we beat it by one on the right. And if they do something other than Dr. Doom, we are still winning because they go here. Yeah, I think, I think this is right. I think this beats Doom and most other things. Yeah, because we, we tie left, we tie middle, we win right by two. God bless. Yeah, that blue Marvel variant is honestly one of my favorites in the game. Yes, if you don't have Goose, I would recommend Invisible Woman for that slot. The replacement level cards in this deck are Daredevil and Goose. I consider Cerebro, Mystique, and Brood to be the ones you kind of have to have for the deck to be anywhere near optimal power level. Yes, this is my favorite Cerebro variation for sure. Do I have a favorite card in Marvel Snap? Probably Juggernaut. I really, really like his effect and his efficiency at that effect. Which, Juggernaut's another one of those cards that's kind of been made worse by Leech Leader, which makes me sad. No, if I didn't have Daredevil, I would replace Hobgoblin in this deck with uh, Iron Man for sure. I think we snap Brood into Luke's bar, right? They're leaving. Because we can storm the Strange Academy to make sure it doesn't push anything into here. It's hard to get all the roaches out of the bar, chip. You can kick the first one out, but they always leave little friends behind. I would not sub another one drop over Hood in most Hood lists because of Killmonger, like you said. I would play Mysterio if you have Mysterio. Otherwise, I would just play another two drop. It's, when people use the word cucked as a descriptor, it's so, it's just so strange to me. One, it's kink shaming and we don't kink shame here, but two, like, can you just like find any of the other hundred words to use to describe whatever you're describing? Please and thank you.
are we... I think Bar Sinister is probably good for us, right? So I think I want to storm here. Well, Necrotia is not great for us. Although I guess if I'm blue marveling Bar Sinister Necrotia, it doesn't matter. Yeah, let's, let's storm the Strange Academy, actually. And then I'm going to Hobgoblin Necrotia, I think. Do I like Cerebro or Patriot more? I don't think Cerebro and Patriot are a strictly better, strictly worse comparison. I think... I think Cerebro is... What's the word that I'm searching for? Cerebro is a better a disruptive deck. While... Um, Cerebro is better at being a disruptive deck. While... I'm gonna stay in for the stakes raise here. Um, while Patriot is a better big numbers deck, if that makes sense. Am I about to get leeched yet? I wanted to Hobgoblin here, but I think I'd rather Blue Marvel to play around leech. Uh huh? Thera, okay. Right, we're bringing this hood back to neutral, chip. Okay, do I punt the left now? Do I punt the left and just go Cerebro Mystique? I think so, right? We do lose to Enchantress. Are we good? I think we're good, right? They might cage. Do we lose to Luke Cage? I don't think so, right? Yeah, okay, cool. Our opponents played a lot of hazmat yet. Respect. Is uh, That is a dedication to hazmat. Beautiful split. The monochrome with the... So excited, chat. I really. Part of me wants to pause the stream and upload the emotes now, but we'll be we'll be a good boy and wait. Later, later tonight, chat subscribers, you'll be able to use these this weekend, and then obviously next week for my stream. That'll be off this weekend, but the emote artist finished all of these, and she did an excellent job yet again, and I am excited to have them. We have the cowbell of shame. We have a toxic emote. This is fine. My never lucky rubber ducky. Iceman sniper is pretty good too. But yeah, a lot of a lot of bangers there. We put goose on Carmitage to keep them out of doing anything too silly here. Oh no, chat! They made my hobgoblin worse. Ugh. I'll never be able to recover. Kiwi, thanks for the two months. You know, people always complain about Scorpion into this deck, but that's another reason to play Hobgoblin, Chet. Is it's it's legitimately good into into Scorpion.
gonna play these here for the sake of making a lizard worse. Mm. Hopefully they got blue marvel and not a sick cop goblin. the game. Start Nightcrawler in Fist Towers. That way, if it's got to bail out, it can safely go to either of the other two. I would Spider Man emote them here, chat, but our Nightcrawler is clearly superior. We are not the same. Okay, so the Cerebro plan is off thanks to the Monster Islands here. Movement deck. Movement deck means I want to storm the right side to keep them locked out here, ideally. Things like Monster Island, yet another reason to play Hobgoblin in this archetype. Is this deck good without Mystique? No. <laughs> they actually can't play into here this turn because um. The Iron Fist trigger is up on them. I want to play Cerebro to the left because it gives Monster plus two points. Okay. Okay, golf clap. Okay, well played, well played. That's a Mr. Fantastic, lovely. So let's uh, let's Blue Marvel and then we'll, oh wait, I could slide. What's more likely to win me the game? Do we think Blue Marvel mid wins me the game or does Hobgoblin mid? Cause I can move Nightcrawler plus Mr. Fantastic to win the right. You want a blue marble left to play around arrow? These decks don't usually play arrow. I can't play all three of these cards yet. I have to pick two of the three. I think they're gonna Heimdall, maybe. I'm gonna blue marble. They're also a blue marble deck, okay. And their Nightcrawler can also jump. So I'm gonna move my Nightcrawler, play this, play this. This is the most stats I can put into play here. This was a bot, right? Feels like big beep boop energy. Uh, Hobgoblin gets bounced out of your hand and bounced back to your hand with Luke's bar. Feels beep boopy. Game's off to a little bit of a rocky start here. 
Yeah, this is, this is one of the best variants of the game, no joke. It's great. It's a little annoying. I, I can't storm middle if the Strange Academy is up because the Strange Academy could push their stuff into the middle. They played their Carnage, which means this Hobgoblin on five is probably a fine play. And then we're hoping to peel Cerebro in our next two draws. So we can go Goblin into Cerebro Mystique. their wave here or not we should rock right in case we hit marvel that's a great shout gap uh, agree hopefully one of these isn't like a venom or something just to come on her sure So I only go to six middle and I'm only up 11. I think we're actually supposed to Cerebro plus Nightcrawler here, right? How many things have they killed? They've killed two, three, four, five, six. So death currently costs three. Yeah, Cerebro plus Nightcrawler is plus eight. Rock doesn't do anything. I guess it stops Ronin and it, it enables Mojo. And cool. Yeah, and they, like, we both got some tree, right? So the odds of them having their stuff is low. I mean, the Moon Dino deck and got into pool three not long ago. I added Mystique and Iron Man to the deck because of your Mystique video. I'm winning so many games. Hey, congrats. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, I think the, I think the deck guide content where I take a card and then build decks instead of building decks and having people replace cards is, uh, Something that's been lacking in the snap snap community as far as content goes. I think I think I'm gonna try and put out one to two of those a week to cover all of the key cards in the game here in the next couple of months. Yeah, yeah, I think it's that's not easy content. It's a little bit more work than putting together some of the other stuff, but yeah, I think there's a lot of good space there. The feedback the feedback has been good on that, and the the view the viewer metrics, the view count's been good. So I think we're gonna do a couple of those a week moving forward. Which is good. That's the. I'm glad that that content piece is being successful because content like that that really fills an educational value is the type of content I like to make, and it feels feels good. A lot of the times when there's a new content piece that I that I like want to make, it like ends up doing poorly and it's sedge. But that one is something I've been wanting to do and it's doing well, which is great. Devil and Ice Man. Yeah. If content was easy, everyone would be a successful streamer. Yes and no. So, like, I think there's a lot of people that are very good at making content that don't ever end up being successful. So that's really important to acknowledge, I think, is that while I'm certainly good at what I do, the fact that I'm good at it isn't the only reason that I've found success here on Twitch and YouTube. There are a lot of factors that are completely outside of your control as a content creator that dictate whether or not you're successful. And if I... If I were to break it down, I know people like statistics. If I were to break it down, what goes into the various parts to be successful in terms of being a content creator, I'd say it's probably like 10% luck, 20% skill, 15% concentrated power of will, 5% pleasure, and reading Twitch chat is definitely 50% pain. 
And don't you dare try and tell me otherwise. Fifty percent paid on the Twitch chat might be might be lowballing it. That's fair. Chat, listen. I shared. I shared my uh, my most listened to music from uh, Google Play for this year, and my three most listened to artists were um, Fall Out Boy, Panic at the Disco, and My Chemical Romance. So you could say that I have a type. Thanks for the prime, Nan Nancolm. Appreciate it. Jeff is the 2000s. I am. I am the 2000s. Hmm. Opponents leaving. Good beats. Victory. You'd love against the current. I do love against the current. They are in, in my rotator. You are correct that they are very good. They are, they are my jam. I'm also not saying that my daughter is named Haley because of Eminem, but she could also be named Haley because that's the lead singer of Paramore. Both of, both of those things could be true. Sharan, thank you for the two months of Prime. Appreciate that. Super awkward that we have none of our five, one or two drops here. They didn't realize you're an emo at heart. <laughs> Jim Sars, thanks for the prime. These locations are gonna shuffle here in a second. Unless we storm the left. Maybe we just storm the left here. That's true. If you ask my wife, neither of those things are why she agreed to name our daughter Haley, but they're definitely parts of why I agreed to name our daughter Haley. Wind aid my hand. Wind aid my hand. That I have super long hair as a child. Of course I had super long hair as an emo child growing up in the 2000s chat. Come on now. Come on now. What kind of question is that? I was, uh, I was 17 in that picture. So that means that picture was taken in 2007. Agent Cell, thank you for the six months. Appreciate that. Welcome back. Ooh, we're losing the left, Jet. Quantum Taco, thanks for the prime, and ANR San. Welcome, welcome as well. We mystique in to fill this with Mr. Sinister. Sounds great. Although maybe I want to mystique here actually, so that way I can sneak Mr. Fantastic into here potentially. Yeah, it's probably the line. It gives them a Cerebro effect, but I think that's also okay. Oh, this hedge is Cosmo too. Yeah, that's a good call. 
Doesn't Mystique double her ongoing? She does not. That's a good question. So Mystique into Karmatage still only gets the ongoing effect once. Bezio, thanks for the Prime as well. Missed that one. And Agent Cell, thanks for the half a year. Is this deck okay without Brood? I think it's much worse without Brood. Yes, machi Machine World gives them the final copy of the card after all effects are applied. So they will get a Mystique that has the rules text of Cerebro. Opponent snapped. I think I'm staying in here. Come take my cubes. Is Professor X on the right is not great for us? If they Professor X us right, our Cerebro. Mm. This is okay for us though, right? My Mr. Fantastic is still winning the center, is still winning the left. Oh, my Mr. Fantastic will put us to a tiebreaker. So I would rather blue Marvel then, right? That's what I want to do. Although I guess if I just blue Marvel, we lose to the mystique we gave them, huh? Absorbing Man does not work with mystique because mystique no longer has an on reveal ability. She has an ongoing ability. Where's Mr. Baku, chat? That's fine. If Baku was in this deck, he would have been Ice Man and he would have been in our hand anyways. Yeah, Spider-Man plus Machine World locks us out here, unfortunately. Escaped. Mystique really isn't replaceable. The three core cards in this deck are key cards. I usually call them our Cerebro, Mystique, and Brood. Obviously, if you want to play it without those cards, you can, but I think the archetype is much worse without those three. And storm. I was hoping to storm danger room. It's a little sad. It's fine. We can brew danger room now. I agree that Daredevil and Goose are optimal. I like this. I like this 12 card, these 12 cards a lot. Uh, actually, let's go, let's go Mr. Fantastic second, just in case we want to mystique him. Sometimes that happens, depending on what we draw. There is a reason why Mystique is my number one recommended Series 3 card to watch out for with your collector tokens. Rock Slide! Somebody's ready to play, uh... Somebody's ready to play some Dark Hawk chat. I know I am. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna buy the cosmetic bundle that's going out tonight. Look at this combo deck, chat. The old rock slide to make my draws worse, but also just give me more draws so it largely doesn't matter. I'll snap them here, I think. Nah, I think you could swap Goose for Scorpion or Invisible Woman, no problem. Well, the, the Sunspot one has collector's tokens and stuff in it, right? Most of the other bundles do not. I'll probably buy the Sarah bundle because 4,000 credits is 80 collection levels. I'll probably throw my wallet at that one, but the other smaller ones aren't that many levels. My standing. Yeah, I have a sit-stand desk, so I split my time streaming, sitting, and standing.
Do you still like the Thor Jane non Thanos Lockjaw deck? Yeah, definitely, Rocco. This is actually one of the decks I listed in my Friday favorites today. I think it's uh, a great choice. The Winter Wonderland with Sunspot I will buy very quickly. All of the bundles with collector's tokens are great for progressing your account. I'd rather Cerebro than Blue Marvel. Means we punt the middle, but we probably win the left and right, he says optimistically. It's a little bit more susceptible to disruption, though. I think the Apocalypse bundle will return. No, I'm expecting them to run different bundles, though. Shang-Chi doesn't exist. Things that I don't believe in can't hurt me. Victory. Hey, catch you later, Arcadence. Yeah, I should probably slide along to the next exhibition anyways. Hots, if you're hanging out, let's take a look at what you got here. Nothing location specific. Already have Hazmat Cage, Ongoing Destroyer, and Avoid Movement stuff. Yeah, I can fill that. What we got going on here? We don't know, B9. I would be surprised if they rerun the cosmetics from these bundles, because it makes people less likely to buy the bundles. This pool's pretty full, right? Got a lot of, lot of goodies here. I'm not going to play it for a second deck in a row, but worth noting they have Cerebro, Mystique, and Brood. They are missing Ghost Goose, but they have Invisible Woman. Yeah, the FOMO is the point. FOMO sells. They have the stuff to build Sarah's Surfer. They have Lockjaw with Thor and Wasp. If this was my pool and I was hot, I would put high value on Mr. Negative in the token shop if it came up because they have Mystique, Psylocke, Magic, and Sarah, which is the important core of that deck. Winning consistently isn't important in Marvel Snap. Mitigating your losses with good retreats and leveraging your wins with appropriate snaps is the key to progressing along the ladder. Yeah, I mean, this collection is just like pretty, like they have over half the cards, right? It's almost easier to look at what they don't have than what they do. They are notably missing Quinjet. Like the big winners that this collection is missing are definitely Quinjet and Mr. Negative. Yeah, that build a Cerebro 2 I was just playing. I was just assuming Hots wasn't a scum degenerate, so I didn't point out leader. Respectable Marvel Snap players would be sad that they're missing Quinjet negative in this pool. For, cl for clarity's sake. But to, it's, almost, it's almost harder to figure out what I want to do when we have this many choices. For folks that are looking, asking, how do you get this card sheet? 
You can find it here also, because I haven't pulled this up today. Something to note if you fill in this card sheet. There's a second tab here at the bottom called Packages. The Packages tab automatically fills in based on which cards you have checked off. And for many of these, there is a YouTube video linked here that shows me playing something with that package on my channel. So you can get a feel for what the gameplay looks like. So even if you're not planning to donate in the future, this is a great tool for tracking your collection in and giving you a better idea of what things you can be working towards and building. Someone said, can we build Surfer Patriot? Maybe, we have Brood, we have Debris. Yeah, I like that idea. We haven't played Surfer Patriot today. And they have all the key cards for that. Let's do let's do that. I think Surfer Patriot's a super fun deck. It's one of my Friday favorites I listed. Surfin in the USA. Yeah, they have Psylocke. They have Brood. They have Debris. They have Wave. They have Surfer. We haven't played with my new Surfer split yet, chat. Man, this variant looks awesome. And by the way, chat. In case any of you are having a fear of missing out, this is the season pass variant. When the season pass is gone, so is this one. So if you want this gas piece of art, make sure to slide Ben Bro to $10 bill. I do not think Sarah Miracle is very good right now because of all of the leech decks. Yes, Psylocke and Wave are in this deck purely for the sake of getting Sarah out early because Sarah is cracked and getting her into play early is cracked. Surf's up, my friends. You think the artists who make them prefer their artwork be limited? I know that this sounds backwards, but the truth is a card being available for a limited time makes more people have it, not less, especially in the short term. Maybe years from now that's not the case, but a lot of people will buy it simply because they know it's not coming back. So they run those as exclusives because a lot of people will just be like, oh, it's not exclusive, I'll get it later. So the fear of missing out is an important predatory sales tactic because it encourages people to pull the trigger on things they would otherwise be waffling on. Sarah is really important in the Mr. Negative deck because Sarah gives you powerful draws when you don't have Mr. Negative. I think I might, I was just say I could wave to Sarah next turn, but Luminari actually makes that not the case. Play with Cyclops for a minute, play him here. The fear of missing out and time sales aren't even just a mobile gaming thing, Jet. Go to your local grocery store sometime and see how many things are on sale temporarily or only for the weekend. Mobile games certainly perfected predatory practices, but all of these things that mobile games leverage are definitely not exclusive or new sales things. Orca was left out of the release due to some bugs. I think we Patriot here to play around Leech. Although we're probably just getting waved. I don't think I can stay in if they wave us here. I think I just leave. Escaped. I think my favorite is when people say they only buy normal priced games because they're not predatory. And then those same people have like 200 unplayed games in their Steam library that they bought on very predatory Steam sales over the summer and the holidays. The Pimpy, thanks for the brand new Prime, appreciate it. The 
Steam Winter Sale started today. L O L. That's great, Link Scheme. Well, this is certainly a game board. How do you access the Discord server? I will manually sync the Discord server for you now. Integrations. All right, if you go into your connections tab, the Discord server should pop up for you in a second. It's thinking, it's thinking, it should be done in a moment. The sink is finished. Okay, so Barood will die, which conveniently leaves a space here for me to be able to surfer next turn, which is great. Because I can't surfer on the right here. Do I snap them? I'm gonna snap them, he says before getting leeched. Is that wave generally available? So the wave variant that I'm using was a season pass exclusive, was a season pass variant from the closed beta. However, they have told us that all of the closed beta cosmetics will get reruns. The first season pass that had exclusive cosmetics was the miles pass because that was the pass that the open release started at. Daredevil was also a season pass card during the beta, yeah. Yeah, beta season pass cards were Wave, Thor, Daredevil, and Nick Fury. We had four four seasons. Hey, Vice, to get out of the rank 60s. Yeah, snap and retreat better, following my when to snap guide. Is a uh, give you a Psylocke play Sarah in Goha. Turn four Sarah is wonderful. command for my token shop video. We should do that. playing Brood and Psylocke here. And this potentially sets me up to be able to Patriot Mystique Surfer on the last turn. Walkers is kind of terrifying.
negative lockjaw Thanos. Why is that good? I guess drawing cards after you negative is funny. Okay, I'm in. I mean, I don't take a lot of convincing. been wrong to storm here. I don't know. Win center and left. Close game. I think we're playing Amir. They're playing Wong though. Victory. Does Patriot buff the cards impacted by Leech? It does. Yeah. That's one of the fun things about this list into the meta deck. So, Debris, Brood, and Cyclops are kind of the only cards in the game that fit in the center of the Venn diagram of what cards do Patriot and Surfer both buff. So, they don't really have great replacements in this deck. cracks me up what offends people online. My chat's not elitist. I just have expectations of you above the bare fucking minimum of rolling your face across the keyboard before you press the enter button. There's plenty of other Twitch channels online where a massive spam of Keck W's and other nonsense is the average thing you see in the chat. And there's nothing wrong with that if you enjoy that Twitch experience. There's just a lot of that experience out there already, and I don't want my channel to be that same experience. And again, I'm not going to yuck someone else's yum. If you love spamming and all that stuff in other places, like, more power to you. I just don't want that to be the norm here. You have a video on the Sarah and Angela bundle. I have a, I have a video on the current Hearts Wild bundle, but I won't evaluate the other bundle. And the Hearts Wild bundle talks about the data mines for the other ones, but we don't know that those data mines will stay the same. So I'll do videos on the individual bundles once they fully release. Thanks for the two months, Matthew. Appreciate the prime. Welcome back. Blightning, thank you for the 27 months. Oh no! Foiled by Electra, chat. Brutal. Well played, opponent. Uh, Keck W is just a zoomer way to say LOL. Thanks for the prime, Jaden. Man. I guess I could have played around this by. Yeah, I, I messed this up. I should have put Cyclops in the middle. If I would have put Cyclops in the middle, we'd have won, right? I could have swapped these. Minus eight here leaves me at 14. It would have been close win here. I don't know that that's wrong. Electra's maybe something. Thought that maybe this is something we should play around because Kazar plays her sometimes. Are 
any decks that make Black Bolt viable. There are not currently. So there is an unreleased card called Stature that will be very good with Black Bolt and I would bet will make Black Bolt a competitive card if she releases as she's currently data bind. But without her, Black Bolt's definitely missing a piece to his puzzle currently. And unfortunately, I think this is a turn three Psylocke, turn four Sarah Angle. You basically never play Psylocke on two in this deck. It's purely here as a way to accelerate into Sarah. Uh, for folks in chat asking what Stature does, the bot has unreleased cards in it now, so there's Stature's text. Five costs, seven power, costs one if your opponent discarded a card from their hand this game. Really, really neat effect. Uh, I play Snap using blue stacks. Yes, it will work with Moon Knight as well. Stature, Stature will basically create a new package. Stature, Moon Knight, Black Bolt will be a three card combo you can put into a bunch of different decks, which sounds like a lot of fun. I would like to Debris. I would like to Storm Warrior Falls. I would like to play Shocker. I want to Storm Warrior Falls so the rocks don't go away this turn. I think I'm going to snap them. This is so good into their Sarah chat. Just fill your board up, enjoy your two spaces. And we conveniently have three spaces left yet and can play exactly three cards. Oh, we have a fourth card, Sedge. Um, you, you, you. Yep, yep. Yep, 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 yep. Um, actually, I think we're least likely to win left. So I think we put we put Cyclops middle. Yeah, this, this. Let's do this. Let's put the most power left and center. Victory. Bum, 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 bum. So Gap, I'm expecting. Yes, that is exactly correct, Diva. You figured that out a lot faster than most of us. The Thanos doing a Thanos thing is like added gravy. The good thing about Thanos is 100% the stones are busted. Yeah, if you don't have Wasp, I would play Misty Knight in this deck. Wasp is definitely replaceable. This Knight has your back. Yeah, Gap, I think the, I think not only is that correct, that you're going to have people that will, you'll avoid some of the spoiler season hype, but as cards regularly start to downgrade through different series, that will also be a thing that's super beneficial. As an optimized deck or a viewer deck, this is my preferred, this is my favorite Silver Surfer deck. Do I like my hand? I think I do like my hand, Sam. I am. <laughs> What's going on, Immortal? I am. I am missing. I am missing one split. Cyclops is my greatest shame. My greatest shame, chat. Shame. 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 Oh, we're gonna have a shame bell emote soon. I'm so excited. So excited for our shame bell.
I think Cyclops is enough to win the right. I kind of want to be energy efficient this turn. That's close. Is Cyclops a good card in Patriot? Cyclops is not a good card in normal Patriot. However, this is not normal Patriot yet. This is Cerebro Patriot. Sorry, Surfer Patriot. And Cyclops is one of the only cards that gets both a Patriot and a Surfer buff. All right, they just did nothing, right? So we have to retreat. Otherwise, we get got by a bunch of She-Hulks and stuff. Even if this looks kind of fun. This puts us to six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15, yeah, 15 is not enough. I'm leaving. Escaped. You never play Wasp early, chat. I just like to hear the animation. All right, it's so a wave into Sarah Angle. Kinda sucks that we don't have uh... uh tomorrow morning, Matthew. It'll be my non-gameplay video tomorrow on the channel. Oh, you know what? I should have finished, pick, uh, skipped my roll, and I should have played. I should have played the Wasp on three, actually. I was busy talking and clicking, and then because Avengers Compound is here, I can't storm Mindscape. Feels bad, man. All right, so I'm giving them Surfer, Debris, and Storm, and Wasp, because I'm an idiot. Even if we had Wasp out, we'd probably still lose here. packages surprise me. I don't think the movement decks are competitive, no. Movement movement decks and Wong are the two things that newer players kind of hyper focus on that ultimately end up not being very good when you get deeper into the card pool. Marsh. Lucky. Wind aid my hand. Opponent snapped. Uh, I'm about to get leeched, aren't I?
just Panther in the flooding? Really? Uh, yes, sure. I accept your terms and conditions. Okay. Rocks, leader! Appreciates you! Fuck off! Will's up! Thank you for the 29 months. Super happy to see your success with Snap and appreciate the content over on YouTube. Thanks for sticking through. Good to have the old regulars enjoying some Snap too. That's one for the YouTube. That was an excellent game. However, I try not to repeat decks on the YouTube channel for two or three weeks at a minimum. So probably won't have that one on a highlight. My goal, my goal is to showcase a big range of things up there. Maybe make a short then. So, um, I'm actually going to be 32 next month. So it's, uh, it's illegal for me to make videos in a vertical format. So while I agree with you that that would be a good YouTube short, I'm not willing to go to jail for it. They're probably a Killmonger deck, so the hood in the center likely doesn't matter for them. I'll storm the super flow and cut them off the extra energy. Is your favorite arrow deck? We actually played a actually played a wave She-Hulk arrow deck this morning that felt pretty fun. It should be in the exclamation point dex command up on my step, stepped up in. It's called Wave Hulk. Wind, aid my hand. Aid my hand. All right, so they have a Mystique or a Patriot. Either way, not super useful for them. Who paid less attention, high school math students or Twitch chat? You know, fun fact, I, uh, the actual students weren't even the reason why I didn't like teaching high school. The, the reason that I ultimately ended up finishing my graduate degree and going to, uh, going to grad school was because, no, not even the admin either, the parents actually. Dealing dealing with suburbanite parents that think little Timmy has never done a bad thing in his life is like, I'm sure admins vary and parents probably vary a bit too, but like they sucked on average. It's a shame that Debris Rock is one short of winning here. Silver Surfer could win this game though, right? We go up to 19 here and we go up to 12 here. 
I guess we lose most of the time then, right? Because we're only going to 12, they need to beat us by four over here, and we're only going one above them, which means they only need to get plus six, plus five, plus five. Yeah, okay, let's take a retreat. Escaped. Is it true that a new card will be released every week? It's mostly true. So, they're not releasing a card the last week of December because of the holidays, but they are releasing two cards next week. But yes, in general, there will be one new card coming to Marvel Snap every week moving forward. You want a full breakdown on my thoughts on that? I've got a video about it here. Patriot in hand, Raptors on board, Snap in the cubes. All new cards start in series five or the season pass. Shocking, I know. You know the series downgrade schedule. We don't. They still haven't shared that with us. Hopefully soon, TM. It is. It is a really important piece of the puzzle. That makes it expensive to whale. Got to accumulate 6k tokens per week. I actually break down break down the cost to keep up with whaling here. So yes, but also no, kind of. Am I doing nothing this turn? I think I'm doing nothing this turn. I might just wave this turn, actually. Because I'm only Sarahing next turn, so might as well play this out on curve. Yeah, wave, wave disrupts them potentially, right? No longer is Sedge. Has Jeff ever played a leader deck on stream? Yeah, we've had some viewer submissions that played leader in it. But in general, I just don't enjoy playing the card leader. It's not about, it's not about some moral high ground chat. I play games for fun and leader is a card that I really just don't find fun. Leader doesn't really involve much thinking or noodling. You just kind of windmill slam it on six and it wins most of the games it gets windmill slammed in. Do I want to contest the left side? I think I do. I think we just play for every location here. This is plus eight on the left, so it puts us to 15 here. Then we're a bunch in the middle and a bunch on the right. Sign me up. I could also be right to punt the left and then play for the center. Like maybe, maybe Cyclops is supposed to be mid here. We're only going to 13. Ah, so close. Yeah, yeah, if I swap these, we win. Probably bad on me. You don't even need to be ahead on two lanes. You just have to not be behind by four or more on one of them. You have to be ahead in one and, and within three on another. Cyclops was plus three and I lost by four. Cyclops was eight power and I could have traded a zero power Mystique for an eight power Cyclops in the middle. Literally unplayable, chat.
are they doing? Not Cerebro 2. Cerebro 2. Ooh, that lets me... I know what we're doing now. That lets me Sarah next turn. Perfect. They're Kazoo. Yeah, some kind of swarm deck for sure. We're hoping to draw Patriot next turn. To go like, kick some rocks, Patriot Surfer. Shuri! Monka Shuri, chat. Did. Does anyone know how much time you'd have to spend to maximize the maximum spending per month to get through every series four or five card? It's a lot. It's like four or five hours a day, Kirster. Three to three to four hours a day. Yeah, we're super torched here. And that's that's something a lot of people don't take into account, right? Like they just like see the see the dollar sign, but that's not the whole story, right? Like you also have to play in order to spend that money. Ben Ben Broad said point blank that their goal is that most people shouldn't have every card right when they release. And their their system is very clearly designed to try and make that a reality. Yeah, you basically have to be playing Snap as a job in addition to spending a couple hundred bucks a month to be able to spend that, yeah. They want people to have to wait for some cards to move down. No, move decks aren't very good, unfortunately, Kale, so I usually don't play them on the channel. Hey, nice, Volker, congrats. Yes, I agree. I think Snap system is reasonably eloquent and is working as intended. They very clearly had something in mind when they designed it and they followed through on the execution of that well. Oh yeah, I always, the, the little moves deck, I don't think of as a movement deck. When people say movement deck, I just assume they mean Heimdall and Heimdall blows chunks. Yeah, that's that's the perfect mindset to think about it as as a uh, stupid shellfish series series five stuff is basically a public beta test that you could pay to get access to I think it's a great great way to think about it. Do I want to give the opposing Patriot deck rocks? Probably not, right? Why would they play Patriot Yotnam? I assume they were playing just like punt the location. Yes, I've referred to it. Mar the a lot of the dialogue surrounding Marvel Snap's card releases are what I've referred to as Schrodinger's card releases. And what I mean by that is a common sentiment I've heard from the Marvel Snap community is it is simultaneously too hard to get new card releases. But also, if you don't have new card releases, you're not competitive and you're only going to lose games. And those two things can't really both exist, right? Like, it's, it's one or the other. 
Is it too hard to get the cards and almost no one has them? Or is everybody that doesn't have them losing to them? This game could break either way. We might win Monster Isle. Cyclops is going to be 9. And then Patriot's going to be 4, so that's plus 13. And then Monster's going to get plus 2, so that's plus 15. So we're going to 28 here. And we can play Wasp in the middle for Tiebreaker. Wasp is actually smaller than Patriot buffed by Surfer. Victory. catch up over time and eventually get all of them car cards due to releasing one per week Will they drop mini expansions like they did with series four and five so how the system essentially works is everybody will be a set number of card releases behind the way the marvel snap system works is even if you're spending zero dollars so long as you're doing your daily and weekly missions you will get every series three cards regardless of of when you start getting Marvel Snap, when you start playing Marvel Snap. The slowest you get Series 3 cards is 11 per month. And even once they start downgrading things from 5 to 4 and 4 to 3, it'll only be 4 new ones per month. So you will always be able to catch up, so to speak, in Snap, regardless of when you start playing, which is great. Like, that's not true in other card games, right? Like, if you're someone who wanted to start playing Magic Arena or Hearthstone today, you'd never get every card in their game without spending a giant pile of money. That being said, because Series 4 and Series 5 cards are, um, are more tokens, you can't have all of those right when they release, and you will have to wait for some of those to eventually downgrade from 5 to 4 and 4 to 3 for you to have them. So that means players that are in that end game where they have most everything will still be kind of running on that wheel to work to get those cards. Do we snap the the debris into the space drone? Opponent snap. Oh, snap. Let's go, friends. Let's go. They have priority. We could get Green Goblin to get skunked here. What just happened? I know. I need to end on Patriot so I can copy with Mystique Dex turn. What I'm trying to do here. Is it not possible at series four or five cards on three? You can, it's just more rare. Full breakdown on that here. Can we beat this Red Skull? I think we can beat this Red Skull. Right, cause Mystique adds six power here. And then Surfer adds uh, six power here. So we're gonna go to 32 on the left. And we're winning middle, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweet game. This deck is great, chat. This is, this is definitely my favorite surfer deck in the current game. 
Brosham, thanks for the two months. Really appreciate you shipping the Prime this way again. Good old rock chat. Nothing beats rock. Uh, my Discord is private. Yeah, it's just for supporters. I do I do not have it in me to moderate a public Discord server with thousands of people in it. Even even with just being supporters, our Discord server is over a thousand members, so I just don't don't have the bandwidth to manage a public one, unfortunately. Do I snap? Sinister London and Shadowlands are both good for us. Would your Patriot? And I get to I get to double debris next turn, right? Into double Patriot. Hey, Shufflers, here's to many more. Thanks for coming on back. All right, time to kick some racks, Jet. Hey, that is Sigma. Thanks for the prime. Wind paid my hand. Nah, it's fine if London's gone. I did what I needed with it. We're, we're cool. We're cool, Storm. No big. Bot, dippy dot, these doom bots really love the doom bots. Thank you, Mr. Doom. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm just hitting end turn here because if I draw Mystique, I would like to Mystique my Patriot. Victory. Because I haven't mentioned it much today, just as a general reminder for the regulars, I'm going to be off Saturday and Sunday this weekend. You can expect two to three YouTube videos up on the Hoaglandia Snap channel, edited as always. But I'm just going to be Monday through Friday here on Twitch moving forward. We're doing some good climbing today. Yeah, we, we actually started at 79 yesterday morning. It's been a really hot couple of days. So, Wolverine chant, that means we play Debris here and we snap Galactus. Victory. Uh, I have not played any Midnight Suns. The only video gaming I've been doing off stream lately is uh, Genshin Impact. Life's been, life's been busy. So are we doing Thanos decks right now? We played a Thanos deck to start today. Of, uh, I think tomorrow morning's highlight is a Thanos deck on the channel too. Let me check my schedule. Yes, tomorrow morning will be will be Thanos on the highlights channel. I have played a little bit of the Genshin card game. I was actually pretty surprised at how good it was. Seems like a fun little thing. Ooh, that's nice. It means I'm locked out of miniaturized land, but it means I could draw Sarah next turn, right? Hey, Hawk Sauce, thanks for the prime, appreciate it. do this. I don't really want to debris early against the Nova deck because I likely have Killmonger as well, right? Wind aid my hand. Uh, 
Genshin TCG, is that a Witcher style in-game PvE thing? It's both. So it has, it has a, it doesn't have like a ranked mode, but it has matchmaking against other players, but it also lets you play PvE against, uh, against NPCs. I play any Keyforge or Soulforge. I really liked Keyforge's gameplay. Um, I really liked Keyforge's gameplay, but the card distribution acquisition of that game was real strange. Yeah, I reached out to them on social media, Linksky, but I didn't get any response, so. Mod is a regular stream sniper. That sounds about right. Any tips for Jubilee decks that I can play with only pull two? The Sunspot Infinite is like okay. But the only the only like generic Jubilee deck I play in general is like Lock Jaw, she supplements into. So I would I would put a high priority in picking up Lock Jaw if you're set on Jubilee, if it comes up in your token shop. How do I like the Ultron version of Patriot? I think it is the absolute worst deck that people recommend others play in this game. I am absolutely shocked anytime anybody recommends the Patriot Ultron deck. It is complete and total hot dog water. Are we going to play another deck today? We are. Yeah, I have, actually have uh, one more viewer pool that I need to, uh, need to get to. Ultron is fun. And if you enjoy, if you think Ultron is if you want to play Ultron because it's fun, that's a great reason to play it. However, I would never recommend it based on power level. We're in a pretty good spot here. Can you explain what's bad about the Patriot Ultron deck? It's very all-in and telegraphed when it's all-in. And the payoff that it gets even when you get everything coming together and go don't get disrupted is worse than the payoff a lot of other decks have. Uh, I think we're still good here, right? Yeah, yeah, good by a lot. It is Baby Juggernaut. Yeah, I'm not a fan of a lot of the baby variants. Victory. Wait, I'm waiting. I like the, the Silver Juggernaut variant is the one I'm looking for. Prayer for a brood your token shot. May you be blessed. Where can you find decent deck lists? My YouTube channel has a ton of deck highlights and deck lists in different videos. All right, let's take a look at our last viewer deck submission of the day. From a thousand tokens, my favorite superhero is Spider-Man. Anything good with him? There is not, unfortunately. Also, do I not have name on this homework? I don't know whose submission this is, so I'm glad they left me notes. No Lockjaw. They've been playing Arrow, Negative, and Surfer. No Leader, Opened, Absorbing Man. You don't think Spider-Man is good with Galactus? I think it's worse. I think it's worse than Dr. Octopus, yeah. I have a real person browsing this. Zachary, if you are watching. Will Mr. Silver please stand up? How do I make my files on dark mode? There's a browser extension called Dark Reader that will make most websites not look like this and sear your face. Apologies to everyone who can no longer see. I feel you. 
called Dark Reader. Yeah, Dark Dark Reader for Dark Reader is a must. It is incredible that the norm for websites in 2022 is not dark mode. I don't know who designs this shit, but please, for the love of God, add a native dark mode and make it the default. All right, what are we doing with this list of cards? They've been playing... I'm playing Surfer, Negative, and Arrow. They have the Cerebro deck. It's a good shout out of something they haven't been playing with Cerebro, Mystique, and Brood. They're missing Goose slash Invisible Woman, but I don't really think that that's a key card. You play Scorpion in that slot. You're missing Daredevil. Yeah, I don't think Daredevil and Goose are, are key cards. I, I think Cerebro 2 even... Even missing those two is good. Um, what do we have for interactive bits here? We have Viperhood. We have Arrow. The Sarah Miracle deck's in kind of a rough spot right now. We can play an upgraded version of the Disruption deck. They have Hood, Mysterio, and Magneto. Our solid gets in there. They're missing Wong for Toxic Control. No, they don't have Luke Cage. Let's do it. Yeah, let's play the let's play the disruptive deck with some upgrades. I think that build is fun. All 1680, thanks for the 17 months. Welcome back. Isn't Serum Miracle good against leader? It sucks into leech though. Yeah, all the leader decks are leech now. That's the that's the point. That's a that's the innovation. You used to be able to play things that could beat leader. And you can't anymore because they all figured out they should play Leech to beat the things that beat Leader. Saved by aging middle eyes from Google Docs and Gmail. Glad to hear it, Tony. Good Nova. Carnage, Killmonger. I mean, if you're chat, listen, and I, I, I find it abuses me that I have to say this, but if you're enjoying playing a deck and you're finding success with it, don't let my opinion on that deck or anybody else's opinion dissuade you from playing it. Games should be played for fun and play the things that spark joy for you, okay? If whatever deck you're playing has been good and fun for you, keep playing it. Don't worry about what I think or anybody else thinks about it. Said no magic player ever. Resubbing always sparks joy for me. Thank you, Patches. Good to see you. Uh, this card back is the season pass card back this month, Chad. The one that's further on up. There's two, two card backs in the season pass. The surfboard and this one. They're both great, honestly. The last card to be here. We could just play like Shane Sheen. I would use the crap out of a random card back option. 
I think Bast is a more flexible card than Null. Null is ver seems very playable and reasonable, but it only goes in specific decks. It's a little, little more narrow. I'm just gonna play Shang-Chi, I think, for our last one. Gives flexibility on our answers. Not even gonna call this Zack Disruption, because this card, this, this deck kinda has all of the cards I want in this archetype. There aren't really any budget restraints here. Hey, Borean, thank you for the Prime, appreciate that. Jessica Jones versus Rescue. You wanna play Jessica Jones? Because Jessica Jones following up Storm is very good. Whenever I play a deck like this, there's always 800 questions that pop up in chat with Jeff. I'm missing one or two cards from this. What do I replace with it? Chat, this is an upgraded version of my pool two only disruption deck, which you can find here. You should take a look at that build and then split the difference between that one and this one with whatever upgrades you have and which ones you don't. And thanks for the prime, by the way. Appreciate it. I mean, videos up for playing around Leech and Lead. Well, those went in the right order, at least. This, this could have gone much worse, chat. This, this could have been much worse, okay? It's sad that I don't have a Mysterio token to build up in Murray Isle now, but I don't really like uh, Viper and Killmonger in the same deck. Because if you Viper across a hood and then Killmonger later, you kind of undid your Vipers. Usually I don't play those two simultaneously. And because I'm also playing Nova in this deck, I'd rather have Killmonger than Viper. That's nice. Hopefully we draw Killmonger to get rid of uh, the hood and the Nova here, huh? best draw on our deck. Not close. Expecting, expecting uh, Galactus left here. And if they Galactus mid, our vision is there and bigger, so maybe we're okay. Uh, that was a solid wait for the pre-rolls to finish. Click submit there. so I can't change -chi them back. Is this good enough? This puts us to 625. Used to death. It's to null. 
Yeah, it's really unfortunate we have priority. And maybe I'm actually maybe because I have Shang Chi and Enchantress, I'm supposed to not play the demons to not have priority. Could be a line. They didn't play around. They played around the card that came out of my hand gap, not the, not the card on board. That's true. Spider-Man would have gotten us. It's. I think it's kind of unlikely that they have both Spider-Man and um and Doc Ock though. That's true. My line was good if they had something other than Shang-Chi. It is accurate. Oh, these locations are just a giant bag of poop. Oh, they drew Mjolnir right away. Brutal. Cosmo would fit into this deck. I think we have too many on reveal effects to play Cosmo in our deck. I really like to draw Carnage next turn. So we can go Mysterio Nova Carnage. Yeah, it. I was really surprised, Happy Squid, when I happened to be lurking in someone else's chat. I don't, I watch a lot of Marvel Snap. I don't, I don't chat a lot when I'm watching other streams. And someone in chat was complaining that I link people YouTube videos to answer their questions rather than constantly verbally answering the same repetitive questions all day for nine hours. It's like, do... People that regularly watch Marvel Snap streams really want to listen to a streamer explain the same basic concept 8,000 times rather than providing reference materials. Because I, I find that annoying. If, if that's the preferred experience, we could talk about it, I guess. No one likes reading documentation. To be fair, it's a video link though. It's like an audio book. <laughs> it does, it does have that kind of energy, doesn't it, Night Shin? Yeah, I used to do a lot of written content for Magic the Gathering. And I miss I miss doing written content on occasion. There's just like no profitable way to produce written content in 2022. Just doesn't monetize. At one point, I had done a weekly written article for Magic the Gathering for like five or six years straight. All right, they have my Magneto, which probably means we're dead. Is Daredevil a good card from a token shop? Daredevil is a good card, but a niche card. It goes into a specific subset of decks that play in a very particular way. And if you like those decks, it's great. And if you don't like those decks, it's not great. Escape. Is 
competitive Pokemon written content all paywalled still, Trainer Orange. I played some competitive Pokemon TCG like four or five years ago at this point, and I was shocked at how none of the written content was freely available. I mean, snapping on your Daredevil turn can be okay if your opponent is in a strong position on board, but like, when I'm in an awful position on board and you snap the Daredevil, it's like, what are we doing? My favorite card in Marvel Sam, probably Juggernaut. I really like kicking people's stuff around. Goldfish made a Pokemon TCG section that never updated ever. Yeah, well, a lot of the money that exists to be made in Pokemon TCG ha exists to be made, or sorry, in Magic, exists to be made for it like basically being a tiny stock market. And like a lot of other like non flesh and blood card games don't have that same type of experience. All right, now the question is, are they Cerebro or Surfer? We've seen some Surfer decks with Goose. Okay, Punisher implies Surfer, right? Huh? What are the odds Magneto wins us here and here? Non-zero? Non-zero, I think. No, it's still relevant, Simpay. I should probably record another video with it having Electro in it at some point, but the core concept's definitely the same. Come here, friends. Is Vision gonna be enough to hold the right is the question. Hopefully, because we're gonna lose the left. Nailed it. To the person that just asked, is Magneto replaceable? Kind of, but also, also. <laughs> you can play Hulk, but Hulk is, does not get you out of situations Magneto gets you out of, is the long and short. Long and short of it. Does Arrow win there too? Maybe? Maybe? In that particular instance, she might have. What can I do with my 1K Angela boosters? At some point, Dami Mommy Angela will appear in my appear in my variant storm. And I will have a wonderful Angela variant to invest boosters into. Thanks, Uncle Bunkle.
yes, this card back with the infinite porter is, I think is my favorite in the game right now. Playable pool three collector deck. Yeah, you should check out the mystique deck guide I just put out as a bunch of collector decks in it. We'll play Miss Jones into the tower, and then we'll vision into Nidvler. We'll go from there. Well, I purchased the Angela bundle. I will probably purchase the Angela bundle simply by virtue of how much the token value in it is going to be. I think it's, it's supposed to, or sorry, not token. It's supposed to have 4,000 credits in it, but I'm actually not a huge fan of either of the cosmetics in there. They're a little, they're a little too cartoony for my liking. Yeah, Debris a quality disruptive card. So we Shang Chi here. We Carnage here. We Vision here. I don't know that I can click the button here because I think they're too far behind. Should have been pretty. Oh no, wait! Oh fuck, chat! Oh, I forgot. Carnage is gonna eat fission. That's fine. It's a good thing we can't click the button. We're probably still okay, but yeah, good. <laughs> Rip. Can I get an F in chat for vision? Okay, this is a good, a good generic lesson on replacing cards in decks. There's a few people that have asked, Jeff, what do you do if you don't have Magneto for this deck? What does Magneto do for this deck? Well, Magneto does two things, chat. Magneto, one, serves as a giant pile of stats, and two, he acts as a way to help take things out of the flooded zone to add support to storm winning a lane. So that means if I need to cut Magneto from this deck, I want to make sure I replace it with cards that do one or both of those things. So to give you an example of how I would apply that in this particular deck, if I didn't have Magneto, I would replace Magneto with Hulk for stats and then I would replace either Shang-Chi or Enchantress with Claw or Doctor Doom. And this is why Magneto is ideal. He fills two rolls at once with a single card, but we can make up for missing that in other ways with other cards. So Claw or Doctor Doom would give us a way to get extra power into the Flooded Zone after the fact. Arrow doesn't do what I'm talking about, chat. Arrow doesn't help add power to the flooded zone after the fact. How Arrow moves things and how Magneto moves things are very different. Magneto grabs things that are already on the board and pulls them out of the flooded. So I'm either going to want to be able to add more power into the flooded with something like Claw or create things like Doombots that could fly on into there. In general, in my Storm Jessica Joan decks, I like a minimum of two ways to get extra power into the Flooded Zone or a card like Magneto that pulls their power out of the Flooded Zone. This has been Jeff's chat about critically thinking when it comes to replacing cards in your deck. You want to ask yourself, hey, how does this, How? what is this doing and then what other car card or cards can I play to fill those same roles or function? Hood over here on the left. Would love to peel a Carnage or a Killmonger.
Uh, I personally have been leaning more towards Shang-Chi than Enchantress with the way the game has shifted a little bit. I, I actually don't think Shang-Chi or Enchantress are amazing right now into like the leaders, the leader leech decks. But if I had to pick one or the other, I would probably, I would probably play Shang-Chi before Enchantress at the moment. It, it also varies wildly. Like some decks, one's better than the others. Hey, thanks for being here, Lucas. Is there a Nova variant I like? Uh, yeah, there's a couple of them that I like. I just haven't had any of them in my shop. Or my, my randoms, obviously. Damn it, Iceman! Damn it, Iceman. We will have an ice band sniper emote later tonight. I promise. It's done. I just gotta upload it and kick out one of our old ones that doesn't get used. Man, the way that ice band worked out, I kind of just get screwed here, huh? Cause I can't, I never have a chance to play the demon now. It's just like vision into Magneto. I will say. I will say Magneto has felt a little awkward into White Queen. Yeah, I actually do this. You collect approximately five to six thousand tokens per month if you are series three complete, spending no money. You're surprised how much White Queen you've seen us hit with this deck. Uh, the White Queen is in the stock best, um... What's it called, deck? Stock best leader deck. Mysterio is good in the leader, by the way, chat. They get a zero power thing. You get to offer them a warm old cup of get fucked. Why are we in giga slow mode today? I've been missing too many messages from my subscribers and alerts from people that are supporting. So moving forward, since the channel has grown, it's going to be in slow mode. If you subscribe to the channel, you are not affected by slow mode, but slow mode's kind of a middle ground between being sub only and being open chat with things moving too quickly for me to keep up. Thor a good buy. If you like Lockjaw, Thor is a good buy. I like this core a lot. Like I said, this deck, this was a viewer pool build around, but I don't actually have any, any budget restrictions in here. I think if you said, Jeff, build me, build me your pool to disruptive deck with no card restrictions. I think this is what I'd give you. Like, I like this, this core a lot. Deadpool is an extremely narrow card. I would not recommend it unless you want to play the exactly one deck he's playable in. Do I want to play Hood into here or do I want to eat Hood later? I think I want to eat Hood later.
This is gonna be a Angela into Storm Center angle. Or, alternatively, I could storm Murder World. Or, we could storm Murder World. Wind, aid my Arrow and Deadpool are very different cards that serve very different roles. I apologize for everybody that thought this was a family-friendly show. Carnage has now eaten Psylocke on stream. It's okay, though. This is a Marvel card game, not a DC card game. All right, one Shang-Chi, please. Magneto. Mm, we're plus four here in the middle. The question is, they could probably get above eight here on the right, right? And take my cube. Damn. Death. I was not expecting them to be a death deck. Uh, I am not planning to run Marvel Snap tournaments without a spectator client. Running, running coverage through Discord screen shares is just, it's just a lot of work for a low quality product and I, I don't want to do it again. Triprotic, thank you for the prime. Appreciate you up in for the second month. Welcome back. Any thoughts on Jug over Enchantress? So, I found Juggernaut to be kind of a double-edged sword in decks like this because while Juggernaut is good on turn four after you flood a location, if you've already created a flooding location, you could basically never afford to play Juggernaut on the later turns for risk of pushing people into the flooded zone that you're winning by a narrow margin. So it's like good in some spots, but like super awkward in others. I'm gonna Mysterio second chat so I get two hulks. Shang Chi in my future opponent. like a shooting cheese snap. Come get my cubes. They're nice and yummy. So, I know this Shang-Chi feels kind of bad and like they snapped on this Shang-Chi, but this Shang-Chi was actually tempo negative for them, right? Because those hulks came as the result of a Carnage and a Mysterio clone. So they technically spent four resources to kill my two resources. Is this a play vision turn? I think 
this is a play vision turn. Can I snap them back here? We're beating leader, right? Do they leave if I snap them back is the question. Do leader players ever leave? Oh, Angela left is one more power, that's true. I'm gonna stay, I think I just take two more cubes from them here. Yeah, and they're still thinking, I bet they leave if we snap them. The real Mysterio, please stand up. Angela is uh, no abilities, chat. Nova, Nova is no abilities. I want to play this after Killmonger because no abilities. Uh, it doesn't matter the order I play Angela in. The sex kind of been super reasonable, huh? Been a good, been a good day for Great Dead. But I'm writing that last one down real quick. Been a good week for grinding. I mean, to be fair, it's been a good couple of days. I spent I spent the first three days. I spent the first three days this week um, r rubber banding back and forth between ranks. Um, I spent the first three days of the week rubber banding back and forth between ranks seventy nine and eighty three, trying new things. We climbed, we've climbed from 79 to almost uh, 95 here in the last two days alone. Swarm Thanos has been great. Yeah, it's definitely my favorite Thanos deck by a lot, Betches. Wow, I am shocked they didn't snap me. The Electro doesn't really bother us here, though, which is nice. I get to just, like, ho hopefully we draw, um, hopefully we draw Magneto, and then we just curve, like, four, five, six here. Yeah, we get Electro's downside. The question is, can they leverage this extra resource sufficiently? the right, Shang-Chi the middle. I can't Angela chat. Electro's in play. Uh, we beat Odin, right? Because we'll Shang-Chi this, and then Odin will be uh, 9, and 7 is 16. It will be more than 16 with these two, right? We're 13, 16, 19.
Yeah, chat, they Odin the Zola, and then Odin goes here and here, and then Shang-Chi kills Black Panther, and then they have a 9 power Odin and a 7 power Scorpion, so that's 16 total power left, and then we have 16 plus 3 for 19, and they have 0 over here. So we're, be we're beating Odin right. They need something like an Armor or a Professor X here. Z2 and Sunspot. All right. They get five here off the Sunspot, so we're still good by a little bit. Yeah, yeah, Victory. So when I asked what deck have I enjoyed the most we've been climbing the last couple of days, uh, I don't know if I have a strong favorite. A bunch of things have been good. In fact, in my video that I had for my Friday favorites today, I listed like four or five things. Chat, like, I don't, I'm not a person that likes to sit and hammer the same thing over and over again. I like playing a, playing a range of things. Is Tempo Carnage? I think this is Tempo Carnage. Our best draw next turn is Shang-Chi, I think. So they can Shang-Chi their monster in Division into Magneto. This is an Enchantress mid-angle. I blame you and how much you switch decks for both my inability to rank up and how much I've spent on staff. L O L. Guilty though. I am guilty of that. I accept. I accept your charges. Vulture, thanks for the brand new break. Appreciate it. What are the odds they fill Fisk Tower on the last turn? I would I would love to Magneto this rescue into Fisk Tower. This here is actually a great example of why I prefer Vision to Captain Marvel. So I can take Vision and move it off of here after powering Angela up to play another card into this path to make Angela bigger. Man, that's a tough one. Do I... Do I do this here and this here and this here now? This puts me to 11 here, which keeps Captain Marvel in place. And it puts me to 10, 16, 18 here on the left. Is 18 on the left enough? It's not if they play any big thing here, right? Damn. Ah, oh, we're gonna lose to priority. This is a, no wait, it's a HUD? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna lose to priority. We win, we win this game if our opponent would have had priority. Good beat for the opponent here. 
If they if they went first here, Killmonger and Rescue get sucked into here. And then we we win here. I think Brood is an excellent pickup in your token shop these days. It is an irreplaceable card in Silver Surfer, Cerebro 2, and Patriot decks. You want to play any of those three archetypes, Brood's a great pickup. Yeah, I decided not to Shang-Chi there because I didn't want to lose to a big play on the left, like a Hulk or something, or Magneto of their own. Are waiting to do this till post Killmonger. Probably storming on three. We'll go Storm into Nidvaler here. And then we could go Killmonger plus Demon on the next turn. And then we could go Jones into Karmataj up to 12. That's annoying. we just do this now? Oh, I think I'm leaving. I really wish it would unready me when they snapped so that way I could have a minute to think here. But because I already clicked ready and they snapped, if they like ended their turn as well, I only have like three seconds to think. It's a really frustrating thing with the timing. Do Absorbing Man and Sarah fit into this deck? I think that's kind of a different deck. Or at the very least, you don't play the Storm Jones package. I also think the Sarah disruptive decks, so like Sarah on five and play their hand out on the last turn, are atrocious right now because they just never beat the Leech decks. But yeah, if you want to play a Sarah disruptive deck with Absorbing Man, there's a highlight of that up on my YouTube channel. But I think this build is better right now. Is Ghost Rider hella good? I don't think so. Hella doesn't have enough power to be consistent, in my experience. So, and I've talked about this before. I think one of the most important things that needs to be addressed from a, a some type of update um, is the, the way Marvel Snap is currently designed it is game theory optimal to wait till the very last second to end your turn and to wait to the very last second to snap. And they really, I don't even know what the solution is to that, but they really need to address that at a core level because one of the best things about Marvel Snap is the pacing of the gameplay. So the fact that it's technically optimal to play really fucking slowly is not great. Oh, Lizard can sub for Hood or Mysterio in this deck. Well, they have priority here, unfortunately. They're snapping me. I think we're actually okay into a Galactus, so I'm gonna stay here. I have Magneto. This is a fake Mysterio, which kind of sucks, but I have Shang-Chi and Division over here. Galactus. 
Can you explain what you mean by game theory optimal? I mean, the thing that you should be doing to give yourself the highest win percentage. Although I can't shang chi them, right? Because we have priority now. It's awkward. Friendly neighborhood Spider-Man here. I should have retreated when I thought they were Galactus. The thing the thing that needs to happen is one, it should automatically unready you and take away the fact that you've pressed ready when someone snaps you. And two, I should be able to press undo all actions to unready my turn. And for what it's worth, those changes, Ben Brode has commented that they want to do that, but there are technical limitations they haven't been able to overcome yet to let them do that. So that is, on their radar and things that they want to have happen just for clarity's sake why carnage and not venom do you see this negative two power thing my carnage is about to eat carnage is better than venom in most decks chat Carnage is also more resource efficient, all things considered. Definitely getting rid of the cloning mats. Wind aid my hand. Is waiting optimal gives you more time to think in a turn? Not only that, but it also gives your opponent less chance to think about retreating if you snap them. Yeah, I can just do this. I do this, and then next turn we go Angela, Mysterio, Demon, and then we Magneto on the last turn. this Kazar? One of your finest killmongers, please. We're not contesting the left here, obviously. Viper is not good in this deck because when you Viper things like Hood over to the opponent, you will, um, when you Viper something like Hood over to the opponent, you can then kill Monger and lose that value after the fact. Okay, so they're planning to Nightcrawler into the Flooded to win it here, but Enchantress has us covered. So we'll go Enchantress here to turn off the Kazar. We'll go Nova to the left. We do lose to a Blue Marvel here. I think I stay in for one more cube despite that. Should be winning the center by plenty. We're going up to 20 here because we're plus four from the real Mysterio. Good chance one of these is Blue Marvel plus another one drop. Yeah, well played opponent. Close game. I think their archetype is great right now. Very, very good metagame choice. They were lucky we didn't draw our Killmonger. <laughs> There's between a collector's cash or reserves, the what you open out of them. Collector's reserves are less likely to open cards and more likely to open cosmetics that aren't contained in caches.
Ooh, that's an experience. Hey, I was thinking about stamping because we drew the killmonger. Oh, Let's get committed, huh? Oh, they're stamping because they have Electra into the domain. That's pretty good. Our killmonger is also pretty good, though. Shame we didn't have priority here. Killmonger this, so I can't play the demon yet, unfortunately, but I think that's fine. Please go in the right order. Please go in the right order. Damn it, they're not. I think it's demon and then Killmonger. Damn it. This makes my... What's the call to the middle? Smaller too. Hey, Dibbles, good to have you back. Thanks for the over two years. See the old magic regulars getting in on some snap action. Ching Chi, please. Vision. Sure. Our worst draw here is Magneto, so happy to not have picked him up. Remember, we're plus four in Nidvalor, technically. I lose the leader left? I think I lose the leader left, right? No? Maybe? despite it beating leader because I think it was important that we be ahead in all three lanes so that way if they only make one play somewhere we end up winning that keeping the vision where it was meant they had to impact more than one lane to win the game whereas if I move vision over here and they play to here and then they win here they win the whole game so what if they would have leadered what would have happened if they would have leadered they would have been uh, 19 here to my 16, and then they would have gotten a five here as well. So we would have tied, been up by two, they'd been up by three. I would have lost a leader by one point here. We, would, we wouldn't have tied the right. They would have been 15, 19 here still for four. And we, oh, we would have tied, sorry, I would have lost the left. Sorry, right, left, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, would have, I would have lost the game by one if we would have leadered. Close game either way. I think I think I like leaving vision there. It's tough though. And Doctor Doom fit in this deck. Um, I think Doctor Doom is generally worse than Magneto, but yeah, you could technically play him as a six drop. I'm a bigger fan of playing Dr. Doom alongside Rescue, typically. 
the top end, the top end of this deck looks a little bit different. If I if I wanted to play Doctor Doom, usually I would play. Um, if if you cut Magneto for Doctor Doom, you need another stat stick. So if I was going to play Doctor Doom in this deck, I would want Rescue and Captain Marvel as well, and I would cut Magneto, Vision, and Enchantress for Rescue, Captain Marvel, and Doctor Doom. Hey, Kahes, thanks for the Prime, appreciate it. Uh, I'm not a fan of Gamora in this shell. I think if you want to play Gamora, I I would play uh, Daredevil. I think Daredevil's great with Gamora, but I, I don't like Gamora outside of Daredevil in general. Yeah, I think I like Shang-Chi a little better than Enchantress right now. Spectrum Destroyer hasn't been super popular lately. So I think hedging big things rather than ongoing makes sense. Mr. Mr. Negative also hasn't been super popular. But again, it's dependent. They're both good tech cards. Play whichever one you like. I'm gonna play this out just to attempt to have priority. Hey, Nuke. Thanks for the prime. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Excuse me. And now that we have priority here, I think I'm gonna storm London so that way they can't copy stuff. Yeah. Wind. Again, I feel like maybe I'm not being clear. I think playing Gamora in this deck is very bad and I would not do it. I do not think Gamora is a bad card, but I think it is a bad card in this deck. I think I snapped them here in a pretty good spot. We're gonna go Angela into Mysterio and then we'll go Vision into Angela and then we can even Magneto middle depending on what they do. Do you think they should add more rewards to the game? I feel like I'm no longer compelled to play once I no longer have credits to earn. In my opinion, if the only reason you are playing a game is to earn whatever free rewards the game is giving you, that's probably a sign you don't really like the game and you just like doing chores and you should find a different game to play that you like playing for fun. I play extra Marvel Snap even off stream sometimes when I'm done with my missions just because I have fun playing Marvel Snap. And I would encourage you to do the same. And that applies to every one of these kinds of games, chat. You should never just play a game to log in and do your dailies and do, do nothing else. Don't I just do dailies in Genshin? Nope. I do, I love the story of that game. I play Genshin because I like single player story driven games. I also enjoy doing the dailies. I have I have fun doing them, but yes, I also do more than just those. All right, so Magneto can pull Bishop out of the flooded zone, but that's only three anyways. And we have two more turns now. Giving them a Nova is a little sketchy. I also don't really want to give them a Magneto on the last turn. Could slide this over and Jessica Jones here to make this large. I kind of like that. wins the left, right? It does minus six here for them, which puts them to 12. And this puts me to 11. And then I gain four here from Nova going to 15. 
Are they gonna play four things out this turn? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think this is good. Close game either way. We could get like Doctor Doomed here, I guess. It's a possibility. Oh, Captain Marvel's gonna get us, isn't she? Brutal. Close game. Close game. We'll play to put it. Damn. So close. So it's 20 months, Blue Thunder. Appreciate that. Welcome back. New WQ. Thanks for the Prime. Appreciate it. I think the other thing about my comment about if you're only logging in to do dailies and doing nothing else is do you have time to do more than that? So you're right that there are days where I only do my dailies in Genshin, but those are days where I don't have a lot of time, right? If you're sitting there and you have time to be playing a game and you're like, I only did, I did all my daily stuff here and I still have more time to kill, but I don't feel like playing this game because all of the daily stuff is done. That's a number one sign that you probably aren't really into what's going on in that game. And again, that's true of, that's where the psychological hooks come in in these games, right? Where they're like, they're keeping you habit building and they keep you playing even if you're, you feel like doing a chore. That's something, that's something that you wanna be aware of in Marvel Snap and every other game is thinking about, oh, Am I having fun with this, or am I just logging in and doing chores? I think we storm here first. Let's try and get ahead. Lock a lane up on the right. Let me get armored here and be sad I didn't carnage. Ant-Man deck likely plays armor. No armor. That's great for us. Uh, I, I guess we're doing this. Does it really matter where I play this? Probably not. There's a good chance we lose the flooding. Oh, they're just not playing for it. That's great for us. And we had vision to get in here extra too if we needed it. Snap them here. They're in a good spot. Yeah. Victory. And Blue Thunder. Thanks for that. Appreciate it. Good to have you back for almost two years. Be synergized as well with things like Collector and Devil Dino. Uh, yeah, those are probably the best uses for it. I don't know if there's any particular beast decks that I love at the moment. It's a neat card, but it has kind of narrow applications. Excellent draw. So now we get to go Mysterio into Nova here, and then I can kill Monger the Nova off of Angela to play another card out to her path after the fact. Hopefully we don't get X-Mansion diff too badly here. Oh, 
I think if you think slow progress is detrimental to Marvel Snap's longevity, you don't understand the video game industry or the human psychology that drives people that play these games. In fact, even just looking at the discussion we're having right now about people enjoying doing dailies versus not, the reason why people enjoy doing dailies more than not is because you get things from them. And take a look at games like Runeterra, where they give players everything right away super quickly. Part of the reason why Runeterra failed to gain traction for a lot of people was because it didn't have enough carrots at the end of the stick. They gave their players everything too quickly, and there's just nothing more to work towards, so people don't feel satisfied logging in to do anything because they have everything. We have Shang-Chi for their death on the right here. The question is, do I want to contest the vault? I might not. Of course, having Mysterio in the negative zone makes that kind of difficult to contest. Okay, it's not going to be the negative zone anymore. I think I'm doing this. And then chilling for now. Yeah. Ooh, punished for not moving vision. In fact, the fact that this was turning into something else probably means I should move vision, right? You have to have the carrot obtainable in a reasonable amount of time. Marvel Snap's collection progress is super reasonable. You get quite a bit in Marvel Snap fairly quickly. You are just, the people that are upset aren't upset that they're not getting stuff in a reasonable amount of time. They're not upset, they're upset that they're not getting everything instantly. We do this and move the vision middle. It's close though. She get us there. In Marvel Snap, the absolute slowest that you progress is 11 Series 3 cards per month. Meaning you can expect to get uh, a card every three days at the absolute slowest. Which is still a pretty good rate. It's a pretty steady drip of things. Yes, the getting 11 cards per month means you are completing all of your daily missions as well as the weekly challenge and making sure you have enough boosters to spend those credits progressing your collection level is the assumption that I'm making when I say that 11 cards per month metric. And again, that assumes that you are spending $0.00. If you are spending any amount of money, you progress slightly faster than that. It's still slow. Even if you're spending money, progression is still not fast. It's just slightly less slow. Brock Tune, thanks for the quarter of a year. Welcome back. Big gold bundle is two months worth of progress. No, it is not. And if you want a full breakdown of all of the numbers, again, it's a longer topic. My faster video here has all of the metrics broken down for you and does comparisons of how quickly those bundles speed you up and best purchase practices. Mysterio to the right here fills in the center nicely for Carnage to get to gobble up. Sounds lovely.
Huh. Guess we storm here for the sake of resource efficiency, and then like next turn is like Carnage mid Angela right. I think my, let's call it favorite, yes, let's use the word favorite in a non-sarcastic manner, part of having a discussion on the internet in 2022 is that I say, okay, this is my experience with this topic and this is all my numbers on it. And then someone is just like, but that's just your feels, bro. My feels are different. And it's just like no actual engagement just like stark disagreement with no logical discourse or back and forth or follow up. It's why trying to have an actual discussion in the era in which we live is largely pointless because people aren't interested in having a discussion. They're just interested in winning an argument. Facts, facts don't exist and reality is whatever you want it to be. It's like, why even bother? I don't think I want to play Jessica Jones here because I don't know that I can win the flooding with what they have set up. I also think there's a chance they play more into the flooding here. So I think I want to try and play for Lamaria and Savage Lands. Yeah, they, they committed extra here. And I guess I could have put both of these down, but I kind of like drawing the Magneto as an out here, which we didn't hit. So maybe this doesn't work. They moon girled. I don't know if they had anything in their hand worth copying necessarily. They're probably dead. I have priority here too, so if they play something big middle, I can't even Shang-Chi them. Yeah, we covered the roadmap update on stream earlier today, and I'll have a concise video covering it on the YouTube channel later if you missed that and you want my thoughts on it. According to TikTok and my Instagram feed, all facts are made up and using, trying to use logic to support your argument is just boomers booming. Oof. Oof. Okay, so I think we play hard for the raft here, right? It means we lose the demon in the long term, but I think trading, I think trading the demon, oh, actually, that's a great draw. So this draw means I could go Carnage into Demon next turn and then we just don't kill Monger. So I get to have my cake and eat it too here. That sounds lovely. Oh, and Vision gets a boost later too. What's going on, D? Jake and Declan are so are so very different when I'm streaming. Like, Jake comes in and just, like, gets right on camera, and Declan's just like, nah, I'm out. Lactus is a free three power. I guess there's a question now. They're probably a Patriot deck, right? So am I still killmongering if they're a Patriot deck? Yes, Hots, we did play your deck earlier. Hope everything went all right for you. Oh my gosh, we can killmonger into Galactus. Is that good? It's funny. I don't know if it's good though. All right, I'm into it for the walls. Kneel before the Galactus. 
I mean, to be fair, their Patriot deck probably isn't very good into Galactus, right? Astro on my deck. It's pretty good, but ours is better. Solid W. I think Thanos is a ton of fun. It's probably like an A minus B plus card. It definitely feels competitive. If you like the idea of can tripping, I think Thanos is great. All right, chat, I've been live for almost eight hours. I think I'm gonna go ahead and call it a day. I will be off this weekend. I'm actually, well, I'm gonna call it a day for being live. I'm gonna go uh, re-record a, or record some thoughts on the news update as well as my thoughts on Galactus being put on the watch list. So that look for that on the YouTube channel in the next 45 minutes to an hour. I'm gonna record and upload that. There will be YouTube videos up Saturday and Sunday this weekend. I'll be back with more live stuff Monday about 9 a.m. Central. Appreciate all the new followers for folks that are new. I'm here live on Twitch Monday through Friday during the week. Be sure to check out my YouTube channel as well that I just referenced and uh, enjoy your step in. And have a great weekend, folks. The man, the myth, the legend, Day9 is streaming some more Marvel Snapchat. Go enjoy Sean. He is a uh, excellent human being and content creator. Always, oh, never not rating Day9 chat. 